I'm home court, she's standing trial. Why ain't I see you round back when I was down? I'm home court, she's standing trial. Why ain't I see you round back when I was down? They ain't believing me in the beginning. Who wanna hang around now they see me winning? I'm home court, she's standing trial. Why ain't I see you round back when I was down? What's up, world? It's your boy, Big Core from the Holding Court Podcast. Today's episode is sponsored by none other than my brother, Master P, Rap Snacks. Available in all stores nationwide. Actually, this is my favorite one right here, Master P, Icons, Rap Snacks. Go pick them up now. All right, what's up, world? What's up, world? It's your boy, Big Court from the Holding Court Podcast. You know what it is. You know, got my partner, Ken in the back, my co-producer right there. Yes, sir. Um, man, today we yes. got an amazing, amazing guest. Everybody knows how I feel about this group. One of the, he's a member of one of the greatest rap groups of all time. Legend. No argument, legendary, hands down. I don't care what they say, who they trying to compare him to. We got my yes. player partner, Grammy award winning artist, Flesh and Bone. What's up, my brother? Yes, AKA indeed. Stack. <laughs> yes, indeed. Mr. Flesh and Bone, Stack the Fifth Dog, Bone Thug, himself in the house. Court, thanks for having me. I really appreciate you, big bro, man. I hope yeah. everything's well. For sure, brother. I appreciate you making time, man. I know you got a hectic schedule, and I appreciate you making the, the necessary concessions to sit down with me, brother, because you could have been anywhere in the world, but you decided to be mm -hmm. here with Big Court well, you on know, the every, Holding Court podcast. Every, 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 Everybody better have a hectic sketch, hectic schedule learning how to be busy as hell. Cause if you ain't busy as hell, something's wrong. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, but this is like, no, man, we out here having fun. And this is part of that whole process, bro. I, yeah. mean, I was looking forward to doing this one right here, man. I really was, man. I'm glad to have an opportunity to be with you on here today. I appreciate that, my brother. Love. So, uh, man, I'm going to jump right into it. I mean, of course, man, everybody knows yes. y'all's story. But, you know, hey, we in a new generation. You know what I mean? And some yeah. of these kids oh, yes. was, you know, they wasn't even born when when they know what we yeah. know. You know what I'm saying? So let's start from the That's beginning, tough. bro. Where you from? Absolutely. Bone Thugs and Harmony. We reign from Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, we come out of the early 90s into the mid 90s. We were <clears throat> some of the pioneering ones coming out of uh, Ohio, Cleveland, Ohio, 1993, uh, rambunctious, uh, ambitious, um, 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 and, and, and trying to explore our, our, our overall goals of uh, becoming um, um, musicians, hip hop artists, rap artists. Mm -hmm. So. Um, at uh, 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 mid teens, I was uh, 18 when we took off. By the time we met Easy E, well, now nah, let's, let's drag it back. Let's let's drag it back. Let's drag it back. I want to start from the beginning. So, what was it like growing up? Yeah. In you know what I'm saying? Like I want to oh, go back man. to Stanley. Stan before Flesh, let's oh, yeah. Stanley House. Oh man, you talking about you talking about something? Uh, even before as a kid, like we decided to be say yeah. say yeah. What kind, decided, Flesh? what kind of kid was Flesh? What kind of kid was Flesh? Man, flesh was flesh was a flesh was a uh, you know flesh was one of the mischievous, um, it, it always into something, always exploring. Uh, I was a I was a I was a kid that was you know I'd be the I'd be the kid that just that just painting on the wall. I would be the one that the, the, the parents walk in the room and you see this big ass portrait on the wall. You dig what I'm saying? Because I had got a hold of two markers or some shit like yeah. that. And then so you was artistic. You, know, I, I, you was artistic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I was <laughs> I was the one that you know accidentally set fire to the to the to the to the upstairs closet because just because the lighters was there and they all look different when you when you spark so i just wanted to, you know i was i was one of yeah. those type of dudes not that i was bad yeah. it was just that if if the stuff is there for me to test and tamper with i was always into shit real yeah. bad real good yeah. and um and that was one of them things and even though we grew up and we grew up in the studio environment mm -hmm. so when my, my mom and my aunties and them, I'm talking about toddlers, two, three, four years old, with my mom and them in bands and 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 stuff like that, and in studios and stuff like that. We would be into everything. I would, I would touch everything, mm -hmm. especially like the drums, 
in the, the keyboard or the microphone. I remember I used to get electric. But there, so something was wrong with the microphones back in the early mm. um, 80s. <laughs> because when you grab the motherfucker the wrong way, it yeah. shocked the fuck out of you. Yeah. <laughs> It'll literally electric your ass if you grab it the wrong way. But I got hooked on that shit and I yeah. like getting no, but I used you to were grab, singing. So you were singing back then or rap you weren't rapping, you were singing back then, huh? I, no, mostly just mostly just in into the harmony, into yeah. the into the harmony and the singing and mm-hmm. cause like 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 my, my, my mom and my aunties and uncles, they had always uh, used to do these little circles where they would get in a circle and mm-hmm. and they would sing and they would do these doo um jingles and mm-hmm. shit like that and they would do that even when they weren't in a studio environment with the band and the guitar the drums and all mm-hmm. of that good stuff but we grew up in that environment and we grew up around talented individuals and that did other things as well carpentry electrician and 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 learning how to work I, I i have a traditional upbringing right i'm an army brat for one all okay. of my uncles played a major role in the military with respects to the army navy air force and marines my father was a marine himself you dig what i'm saying so mm-hmm. i have a true 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 um grounding in in what it is to be a patriot a a patriot i'm talking about i grew up loving not only my family but i grew up loving my country why Mm -hmm. because i can show you the pictures of the men in uniform that raised me Mm -hmm. and uh and uh, on that note um a real solid upbringing Mm -hmm. and um these people were so so talented it rubbed off on us and we were Mm -hmm. even before our first rap group we were like 11 12 years old who was in was that called group? the band-aid boys going yeah. out who was in the group oh man it was me it was a group it was me little, little lazy bone that we wasn't it was steve beat at the time crazy bone his mm. name was aunt d at the time yeah it was a a a a, a, a cool c that's wishbone at the time <laughs> you know busy bone didn't come into the picture yeah. And until uh, the early '90s, but he, you know, at this time, you know, busy, you know, busy was, you know, is quite younger than all yeah. of us. He's about six, maybe about six years younger than I am yeah. right now. But at that time, you know, he was a real baby. He was a baby when I met him. He yeah. was like only 11, 12 years old when I first met Busy. But even at that time, it was still at the peak of of mm. of, of growing into what we were already created and destined to do with, with respect to music and. Right. And, and stuff of that nature. So, right. you know, it, so lazy, it was, uh, it, lazy's it was just, your brother, yeah. right? Lazy's your brother. Well, yeah, yeah. Lazy's lazy's uh that's my blood brother. Your little brother and wish is your yeah, cousin. Yeah, my little brother. Wish is my my cousin. Uh-huh. He okay. Wish is my cousin. Mm-hmm. And and uh crazy, crazy bone is like a longtime family friend that we mm-hmm. that we grew up together. Might as well be a brother. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. They want type shit. Y'all all from the same yeah. neighborhood? same hood yeah same yeah hood. same hood same block and um and uh and uh yeah and then busy came around a, a little a few years later i was like maybe in the ninth grade when i met busy mm-hmm. and uh yeah but you know a very beautiful kid he could sing mm-hmm. real good and that's how he got his little introduction yeah. into uh the whole bone thug experience uh-huh. but man so it's it it it, 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 it was a uh, it, it's one of them things and i'm actually uh i'm actually writing a book about this thing very Dope. topic right now Dope. and uh because it's uh it, 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 we had a few people come to the table and try to put a few a few blueprints together but no better than to do it yourself to a mm-hmm. certain degree. So I'm working mm-hmm. on a, 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 my own personal mm-hmm. memoirs, mm-hmm. just my account mm-hmm. of my experience as a, yeah. a bone thug, not only bone thug member, but coming up in my family and, and uh, expressing my own experience yeah. as a, as a, as a, as a, as a young man coming up and uh, exploring and not only exploring, but achieving his goals um, yeah. at, against all odds. Okay. And uh, did you play sports? Coming in those odds and yeah. Did you play definitely sports? Definitely play sports. I was a, I was I was a track guy. I was a I was mm-hmm. a basketball baseball dude. Mm-hmm. The homies tried to get me to play the football, but I thought that I, they was hitting mm-hmm. a little bit too hard when it came to the, <laughs> to the homies. You know, I was cool. I had some big homies and shit. And yeah. I, you know, I was you know I wasn't that skinny, but I had big homies like three hundred pounds. I wasn't felt like getting yeah. hit by the big homies like that. Like yeah. ah, y'all, I feel you on that. Off. Yeah, niggas they, in the hood, man. Was, the big niggas in the hood, dog. Same thing with me, bro. I was athletic bro, as know, shit, but that football bro, shit, the niggas hit me like that. Homie that's, yeah, yeah. They was hitting hard, bro. Yeah. I'm talking about helmets popping off, 
uh, uh, shoes popping off every time you get hit. But, you know, I'm like, I'm like, I'm cool, man. I'm going to stick to the baseball. I'm going to stick to the hey, swing but the I, bat. I always heard that you were super, that you was a natural athlete. I always heard you were super yeah. athletic back then. You was good absolutely. at basketball. You excelled at basketball, yeah. right? Ab- absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. Did, did you have dreams of going to the NBA? Well, sort of. Yep. Mm-hmm. I sure did. Mm-hmm. I, I had dreams of kicking ass like Bruce. I, I still kick ass like Bruce Lee to this day, though. But that's a top secret, though. Yeah. You dig what I'm saying? No, <laughs> no but I, the, you know, the, one of my, one of my, one of my un, undisclosed uh, uh, favorite sports was boxing. Yeah. And uh, yeah. and uh, and like the karate, I was real good with my mm-hmm. feet and hands. Mm-hmm. And man, I was, I was, I was. I was I was giving them problems, um, court. I was giving them problems not only in the ring but in the streets as it, you know dealing yeah. with all that gang banging yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. Man, I was man, hey, man, hey, man, I was I was touching them bad, bro. I was on that fist fight, that UFC shit, real tough, yeah. bro. I got you know, and I still try to work on it and everything, man. I swear to God, <clears> it's all good though. Did you did you but box Golden Gloves? On that level. The who? Did you box Golden Gloves? Well, no, I didn't. Um, no, I didn't go all the way mm-hmm. with it. To that extent, yeah, you, did you were I'm just saying. scrapping. You was just I, in the street squabbling. I was just scrapping. Yeah, and I was just in there training too. I just training, scrapping, and yeah. doing all that stuff. But I didn't go as far as to do the um any of the the gloves or the yeah. golden gloves or anything like that. But yeah. man, that was one of my favorite sports. And I'm glad it, it was. Yeah, the thing about it, stack. I, oh, the crazy thing is, I always heard over the years that you was the one to yeah. watch out for. You know what I'm saying? Out of all the bones. <laughs> They was like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like flesh, that nigga yeah. crazy. That nigga flesh be he he, you know what I'm saying? He get on one, that nigga stack turn yeah. up. <laughs> yeah, we try to well, we try to we try we try to go there a little bit. And that's the whole mm-hmm. thing about you can't be a pushover when you got stuff to do. Mm-hmm. You know, you have things to do, you have a family to take care of, you got brothers and mm-hmm. sisters, siblings, or whatnot. Mm-hmm. And mom and pops and shit to take care of. You can't yeah. be no soft ass nigga. Real talk. Or you can't be a soft man when you got shit to do. Yeah. You so what I'm saying. You so when feel, did you so got, you got to get to the pay? Yeah. So you so you playing sports. You playing basketball. You in high school. At what point did you you know what I'm saying jump off the porch yeah. in the streets? What 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 point did you get street poison? I mean, you know what was the, the streets? Environment the, the streets like? has always the streets has always been sort of the uh, the upbringing and a part of it that the, the essence of it that came with it when it comes to the even with the rapping and stuff like that mm-hmm. because you would be dealing with the cats in the hood and streets and if your bars wasn't straight they you know you couldn't get in that circle mm-hmm. you dig so you had to be dope all across the board you had to be sweet with the hands and sweet with the with the raps the lyrics and uh there was a lot of street the battle rapping that was going on you know just like how it was in new york in the hallways in brooklyn and in the bronx same thing and same way it was on St. Clair or 105 at East 99th or Remington. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We was we was literally in there in the streets, you know, with that roughness, you know, whatever the case may be, dealing with the drugs and all of that stuff that came with the territory. But we was on top the top of our game when it came to the uh to the rhymes and shit. Mm-hmm. That you know what I'm saying. You couldn't, have, you know, and that's the thing. It was uh the the competitive edge was stitched into you real hard in the 90s or else you didn't make it mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying and no one it's, it's like if you didn't had that heart or to, uh, to a certain degree you're not even gonna no one's no no, no you're not getting out mm-hmm. of there it's quite different today you know what i'm saying you don't then all you need is a, a is, is a is a is a is a, is a plug-in to make you sound right. a certain way <laughs> right. and you good. No, no, we didn't yeah. have plug-ins yeah. back in the early 90s. Yeah, we nah, didn't have nah. you had to get that tools. shit right. You had to get that yeah, shit yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we, wrote, we wrote for bars for each other like that, but we didn't have uh, 10, 12 A&Rs laying around uh, uh, sparring over, you know, you know, with 50 writers in the building, you know what I'm saying, to make one artist successful. No, man, we didn't have all that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And this is why we still here and why you see so many artists come and go and only got six months. Oh, he oh, he was here. He had one hit. Oh, what happened to him? Oh, oh, he he over there um, trying to uh, trying to figure out, um, you know. Yeah, because it wasn't real. Things. Yeah, because it wasn't real. I don't knock these youngsters. Yeah. I don't knock these youngers. I support them and I, I commend them for I commend them for being brave enough to even sit up there and have a voice and say, I have a voice. I got something to say. It takes a lot of man to do that. Yeah. So, so you what point, what point did you get, 
you know, introduced to the streets of Cleveland? Like, at what point did you, you know what I'm saying, right. did you start? I know you was in school balling, but at what point right. did you, you know, get, get you know what I'm saying, street poison right. where you actually start doing the shit you was doing that y'all was rapping about? Right. So the thing is, is that, like I say, we kind of like grew up into the shit. Mm -hmm. I think it's more of a matter of uh, how uh, I tried to be able to create a way to get the hell out of the streets. Yeah. And that's how what it was, because um, you had to grow up um, uh, uh, knowing how to scrap. You had to grow up and dealing with that. You had to grow mm -hmm. up, you know, you know, I had family and that was already in there running and ripping and running them streets. And we were yeah. already introduced to the streets, even as toddlers. Yeah. You dig what I'm saying? Even with the nuclear, the even with a nuclear family around me, yeah. it was already something that was introduced and that was right there. That's hardcore about Cleveland that that came that's so we were that's a part of my fabric. Yeah, it wasn't. Uh, I was a clean cut, and I was in, and even with all of that. So, on top of being uh, 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 an amazing student, mm -hmm. and and that's what one of the things that you know the education mm -hmm. apart on top of being all sh streetwise that mm -hmm. that that came naturally. Yep. But I took advantage, and, and I had to break away and understand how to put up barriers when it comes to the streets to do yeah. my homework, yeah. to be studious, yeah. to Real have talk. a three point five grade grade average, yeah. to be able to even be uh, in, uh, be able to go to college to one of the greatest liberal arts schools in America that teach you top down. Um, patriotism and love for country and all. You don't have schools like that. I was yeah. real fortunate. I'm real blessed. Which 100%. which college did I have you go to? Certain access. Which college? I went to a school. I went to a school in uh, uh, Meadville, Pennsylvania. Okay. Was, What'd uh, you major in? Uh, um, uh, you wouldn't believe this, but I majored in <laughs> political science. Really? Flesh I and bone. A, I, 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 <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I majored in political science. I would have probably been either a judge or a senator or running for the president of the United States at some point. Okay. All right. Governor. Hold on one second. Mm -hmm. I would have probably been mayor or governor or 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 some anything of that mm -hmm. uh, nature mm -hmm. at some point um, had not I, I already been had my mind made up to go uh, uh, cut records and yeah. sell music and and uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, create a brand with with, with respects. And I had no idea we were getting ready to um, um, create the type of music that we yeah. were going to, but we were already doing it. But uh, school was real important to me. That's one thing, you know, mm -hmm. being in the streets, being a tough or being a rough, rough head. No, no. Yeah. One thing about me is that I was already uh, 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 you can if there's a, if there, a, you know, the homies used to poke. They used to come up to the college and literally walk around with me and go to and, and be wait for me to get out of class. But while I was in class, I was mastering my uh, my quantum physics. Mm -hmm. I was mastering my geometry. Mm -hmm. I was mastering my physics. Mm -hmm. I was mastering my philosophy. Mm -hmm. I was mastering my civics. Mm -hmm. I was mastering my biology. I was mastering my American history. Mm -hmm. I was mastering my Spanish. I was mastering my everything. Mm -hmm. You dig what I'm saying? That's one of the things that I had. And that's why I can consider being um, uh, 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 somewhat of a leader. Mm -hmm. Not a leader, but they told me you're going to be they 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 saw it before I did. You're yeah. something for your community. I don't think you realize it yet because my professors used to tell me that mm. whatever you're doing, keep it up. You're doing a great job. Yeah. But education is key, brother. And yeah, I say that talk. on real top talk. of. Yeah, it is. It is. Mm -hmm. It is. It is. It really is. So and then, did you graduate and, and college? That, did you graduate college? No, no. Okay. I left. I left the first year. OK. And I've been I've been educating myself with on online courses ever since mm -hmm. however i left college to pursue my goals as a uh as a uh, as a rap artist yeah and yeah. i was successful in that very successful. very successful in that very to the successful point to where, yeah um i've been yeah yeah very mm -hmm. successful i was i, I saw I, I dropped out of college to move to um california to pursue my dreams and um um the lord blessed me um um huge success in that even to this day and uh and the school does the, the schooling aspect has never left like i said um uh, 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 you know you can take online courses mm -hmm. and and receive all types of education from right. a to z so online. let me ask you, you let me have to be let, in the classroom. let me ask you stack so you know how did you or you guys bone or let me ask you specifically 
you know, how did you develop that style, that unique style? Because your style is still different yeah. from all five of y'all are in the same right. arena, but it's still, yeah. all, it's all different even. So it's how different. did you yeah. develop that that staccato of how you, you know, is that something that you yeah. always did or it grew over time? Yeah, that real talk, real talk, bro. I was like, even as a the the young flesh or they my name my rap name was bd rock and before that before it was bd rock i was had that that like how you say that staccato that lingo that that bravado whatever you want to call it mm -hmm. i've always had something that had something to do with i don't know what it is bro but you know what i think it is i think i'm gonna give a little bit of my secret away yeah but it's when it comes to the metric bars mm -hmm. um a, a, a poetic rhythm Mm -hmm. You did what I'm saying. There are, believe it or not, if you take the basic eight bars poetically, there are at least a dozen different ways to make mm -hmm. those eight lines yep. connect right. rhythmically, yeah. yep. mathematically, mm -hmm. with words. Yep. And it's and I've been using the same method yeah. and pattern, yeah. and it's called a rhyme scheme. Yeah, yeah, because it's different so, pockets so, so, you can catch. That, it's pockets so, in there. So, so uh, I can't be giving that type of education away for free. <laughs> but I'm you might do. We, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, yeah. No, it's called the rhyme scheme and yeah. the rhyme pattern. And there are even bridges and breakdowns yeah. and ad libs yeah. and rhyme schemes. Yeah. The ad libs, the bridge breakdowns. So, 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 bro, I knew that out the gate. Mm -hmm. I understood this out the gate. Every time, then go back and listen to, to even to this day listen to dedication and mm -hmm. listen to the rhyme scheme mm -hmm. and you'll hear how every word connects from the opening word all the way to the closing word mm -hmm. you'll hear how they not only rhyme but there's a, a rhythmic pattern to every line right that right. connects one line to the other from the beginning to the end yeah but um I never, I, I don't disclose that type of information. Yeah, I appreciate often, you though. sharing it on the podcast. <laughs> I don't, want, but I don't you... <laughs> want too many people study. Hey, but you know what? I don't want too I, many people studying that shit, I, bro. That's the secret sauce. Bro. Yeah, I know what you're saying because I used to rap fast as well. Me and my co-producer was just talking about that. And it's so many right. different ways when you when you have an ear for it and you understand it, and you especially when you're getting so many syllables in a bar. You know what I mean? Exactly. It's so many yeah. ways that you can chop it up. Because if you think about it, like mm -hmm. Busy... He, it's almost like busy moves with the hi hat. It's like, -na 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 -na. it's like with the hi hat, where crazy yeah. was more, da -da 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 you know what right. I mean? You know, yeah. So it's it's different, you know, and even Twister, yeah. his was more like a bouncing ball, you know what I mean? Exactly. You know, exactly. so I know exactly what you mean. It's that pocket, it's intricate when you really get yeah. into very, that flow, it's intricate, very, yeah. very, very intricate. Then, you know, that's what makes up, and then when you add the harmony to it, yeah. the singing, the sing songy. Um, and that's what makes Bone Thugs and Harmony because our parents brought us up into that environment, in that environment where we were surrounded by rhythm and blues. Hell yeah. Motown, yeah. You know, James Brown, Michael, yeah. Michael Jackson and, and the Jackson Five, stuff mm -hmm. like that. Prince, um, the, you name it, you know, we yeah. was brought up in that. And, 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 and so you take, take the rap and you add that harmony to it, that yeah. harmony, that sing song yeah. style to it. That's Funk Thug. I, I just saw an interview the other day with Funk Master Flex was dealing with Drake and then they did. And then Funk, Funk Master Flex goes in, does this thing where he attributes the singing part of hip hop. He's, he says, Drake is the one that I know not that Drake understands mm -hmm. and should have corrected him because Mm -hmm. Bone Thugs and Harmony is Drake's favorite um, um yeah, artist. Yeah, for sure. So yeah. you want, so so he so I that. don't knock Funk Master Flex for attributing Drake for being the artist that um introduced first and foremost the sing songy song element to rap mm -hmm. because I'm um, Drake's favorite rapper. Right. So I so I, I still take credit there to a certain degree, but I'm looking at this and I'm looking how certain people take note and then, and they're writing history but leaving out certain elements. But right. um, that's the thing when you're a pioneer or, or whatever you want to call mm -hmm. it, you inspire and you inspire people to be the best that they can. And and then I, I'm sure, and I guarantee you bone thugs and me and my brothers inspire more people than like, like a Drake or yeah. little Wayne. Yeah. Yeah. Or, uh, you feel what I'm saying? So or, let me share this with you stack. Let me share this with you. Or, so you know what uh, I'm saying? Uh, let me, you know, let me share it. Yeah. It's a, it's a lag. Let me share this with you. So, um, 
you know, mm-hmm. we I, I was a part of a group called CCG. We started in the early 90s and uh, we up. and we were rapping fast. You know what I'm saying? We right. were and I rap fast by default stack because I, right. for whatever reason, when I rap slow, I got off beat. I don't know. It's just something about my okay. rhythm. Right. So I was more right. just like busy, just running shit, you know, just da, 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 right. da, 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 you know what I mean? When y'all came right. out, I ain't gonna lie. When y'all came out in '93 and that thuggish, ruggish bone hit, nigga, Ooh, we all of a sudden, you know, we got inspired to put a little bit of harmony in there. You know what I'm saying? So I ain't gonna lie, we stole that shit. We 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 <laughs> we took a little bit of sauce from y'all. We was like, oh, okay, we already been going Thank with the rapid man. fire. Listen, Damn, we never thought to listen, do that. Why we didn't think to do that shit? You know what I mean? Listen, all I got to say is thank you, bro. <laughs> yeah. Because man. That- you know, and, and I needed that, you know, as I get older, bro, and um, as my career grows older and um, the more wisdom and knowledge that I gain, bro, and I am so pleased and privileged to see so many artists that has attributed to their own um, 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 uh, uh, secrets or mm-hmm. ingredients to, uh, uh, of success. Right. Uh, uh, bone thugs and harmony and and no matter what part elements that then inspire you as long right. as you use some of it as, for your own i am yeah. very pleased and grateful to my creator for that and which gives me inspiration for me too not mm-hmm. only to give inspiration but it's self-motivating bro it's yeah. very self-motivating yeah and i and i appreciate that yeah really for sure that's, that's yeah and we always said I- that we always said that publicly you know what i mean like we wasn't like some of the other motherfuckers who would do it and then try to deny it and try to act right. like it didn't exist. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. you know, that's why we were able to get the deal with P, you know, with no limit. We, right. you know, that we were attractive <laughs> to no limit because right. we were the version of y'all. We were the Kansas city right. version of y'all, you know? So, uh, but exactly. I want to, but I want to fast forward to, uh, uh, so you, okay. you went, you went to Cali and then you playing ball. You, you went, you moved out there. What, why'd you move to Cali? Was that to play ball or what were you doing? Yeah, yeah, I, I went out there definitely on a on a mission to play ball, and at the same time, I was I was shaking a warrant in Cleveland too. At the same, it was kind of like two birds with one stone. I was out there um, to get on at, at a different school, trying mm-hmm. out a different school because I had left my previous college. Mm-hmm. I literally left that school, but I had homies that was in school, like at USC and other different schools out there, and everything that was doing a thing. Um, 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 and playing ball and stuff like that. And I used to go to the practices and everything. And uh, I was trying to get my credits and everything transferred from mm-hmm. the one school to the other, but it never was able to come through. I was mainly focused as well on, I was writing all the time, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Every day, all the time. And um, and uh, just one thing that's led to the other, the hip hop scene was just so massive and yeah. so vibrant. And it's, it was just, everything was hip hop. And mm-hmm. for some reason, everything was hip hop. I yeah. was running into all types of motherfuckers, celebrities, mm-hmm. actors, and rappers, and the shit had an effect on me. And I was like, yo, I was telling my brothers and them. So I got on the phone with Lazy Bone. I called him on the pay phone. I called him like, yo, man, uh, um, Cleveland, Cleveland is good. It's Cleveland's home, but uh, California is where we need to be if we really want to tap into more resources and, uh, and 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 try to make it. So that's what happened. Um, um, I ended up going back to Cleveland to round those guys up and come back to California with them, and that's what we did. And then while we were all back together is when we started just fishing together and got on the phone with Easy E. Mm-hmm. We I went by myself at first, saw it was popping. Went back to get him, and then we mm-hmm. went back and, and pulled the trigger and make it made it happen together. So what? Why? Why Easy E? Why'd you pick Easy E out of every? We figured it was Easy E. Uh, we had we had our we had our eyesight we had our eyesight on Dr. Dre. Truth. Mm-hmm. To tell you the truth, we had our we had our we had our scope on Dre. We was like, yo, we gonna try. And we actually even pushed up on him to a certain degree, but it wasn't. You know, it was uh, you know. We pushed up around his hood, but it was it was it wasn't the right uh, mm-hmm. situation, I guess. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then we pushed up on not only Dre, we pushed up on a variety of folks privately at their home. But we, we young niggas, yeah. We you not pushed up that. on That's Tone Loke. I heard y'all pushed up on yeah, Tone Loke yeah. too. They had, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we pushed up on an OG, but he was an OG. He he was able. He handled it a lot better than a lot of the folks we pushed mm-hmm. up on like that. Mm-hmm. Tone Loke did. 
Yeah. You then he even all did he even sat there and entertained. We sat there and gave a concert to Tone Loke and, and you know whoever else was able to you know get mm-hmm. had a patience and everything like mm-hmm. that. But we sat there with Tone Loke for almost twenty minutes. Um, and uh, you know, spitting rhymes and spitting mm-hmm. songs for him right there, and he had his security and everything right there because we pushed up on him. Some thugs, they got every last one of us in a different color and shit yeah. was crazy. <laughs> one in red, one in blue, one in brown, one in gray, one in black. Like, where the fuck these niggas come? And it was like, and we had no shame. We used to push around in L.A. just like that. We had always, we would always get stopped and ran up on by the gang members. Yeah. They would they would brandish pistol brandish pistols and everything. Yeah, but for the grace of God, they would never. It was like it was a reason they they wouldn't do it. They let y'all make and, it. Uh, and music, they 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 let us make it. Mm-hmm. And then uh and they let us they let us they let us make it, bro. And then uh we uh yeah, but we we paid a visit um to a lot of celebrities, man, mm-hmm. and we pushed up on that shit. But then again, we made a lot of phone calls too, and the only one that got on the phone that was like okay what's up y'all heard a lot about y'all uh tell me more about it um was easy to eat okay so what was that like so once you got his ear you know what i mean what how that feel how did y'all lock that down that situation with e and Rufus? yeah that was dope so he was on he was on tour at the time we started calling so he, for about a week or two weeks straight we was calling every day and the secretary kept telling us that uh she would let him know and uh and and uh and lo and behold, um, um, he actually, it was to the point to where Easy actually called us back. Mm-hmm. He called the phone, rang, bam, pick it up. Yo, this Eric Wright is bone there. Yo, this bone right here. Yo, what's up? Yeah, it's on the crack. Um, um, uh, 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 spit one of them rhymes for me that y'all was talking about. And we sat there and we auditioned for him right there over the phone. And he was like, yo, I'm going to be in Cleveland. Well, why don't y'all come open the show up for me in Cleveland? And then when we went to go open the show up for him in Cleveland, we never looked back. We was opening shows up from ever since. And then after he got off tour, he was recording, uh, creeping on the come up as soon as we got off the road with him. Wow. So how did that feel? You got a record deal, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And you with on Easy tour, E, you with an idol. Oh. Yeah, you with a child, childhood idol, you know what I mean? And yeah. you, you recording this record with Rufus Records. What did that feel like at that point? Man, that was amazing, man. Mm-hmm. You know, it was, it was like at home, you know, we was able to, you know, you know, kick our shoes off for a little bit and be kings and, you know, and and mm-hmm. and, 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 and revel in, in the success and, and, and mm-hmm. at least in the success of kicking through the door. Yeah. And uh, we was able to do that to a certain degree. And then along with that came a lot of the pressures of, yeah. you know, this distraction, that yeah. distraction. One of the things I regret was like every time we got down to the nitty gritty and this is real talk. Every time we used to get down to the nitty gritty, it would always be, you know, bigger homies or whatever homies that would come around and, you know, get niggas high and all of mm-hmm. that shit. I used to try to focus a lot, but a lot of the homies would come around with dope, mm-hmm. you know, sherm, coke, whatever you want to call mm-hmm. it. And, and niggas would get, you know, caught up in a, the life of the moment with that type of shit. Mm-hmm. You dig what I'm saying? Instead of focus on actually getting down to the mm-hmm. to the right. Did you, you, would, I, did, I you wish, fuck with, did you fuck with the sherm? Stack, you fuck with the sherm? So yeah, yeah, I fuck with the sherm. Yeah, um, um, yeah, and 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 I and I regret that one hundred percent. But you know, it's kind of like you can't take it away. You know right, what I'm right. saying? You don't you don't want to be able to knock yourself to the extent to where you don't you know. I I never take away what I've done, and I would yeah, never do sure. anything different. Sure. That, but but you learn. Yeah. But the sherm, but the sherm that you know, I had homies come through right at the heat of the moment when I was supposed to be focused. Yeah. Would come around with that shit, and then yeah. all of a sudden I'm focused, but I'm not focused. Right. Right. I'm right. Right. Sherm. Right. Right. I'm focused, but I'm right. high off sherm yeah. type yeah. shit. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it threw me off my square. You think it became a problem? Been. You think it became a problem for you at that point? At that at that point? Uh, for for a couple of years, it did because mm-hmm. once you get on that type of stuff, it's just like any other addiction. Yeah. 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 And so I was, is, that, I was, yeah. is that why? Mm-hmm. Like, because I always wondered with Thuggish Ruggish Bone, it was the four. And it was just a picture mm-hmm. of your face up there. Why was yeah, yeah? It was it was like one of those situations where the 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 drug element of mm-hmm. when it comes to the smoking sherm really got in the way of me being all the way in the mix the way I needed to. Yeah, and uh, but still able to do uh, a, a certain degree of contributing to the writing, yeah, to the writing mm-hmm. process, to the recording process. I was right. not I was able to do some, but mm-hmm. but the drug element knocked me off the rest of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Were you locked up? 
were you locked up when mm-hmm. Douglas Ruggers came out? Yeah, I was. Uh, I was pretty much. I think I was going in and out of hospitals and stuff mm-hmm. of that, like stuff of that nature. Mm-hmm. I had just had an operation, and then when Thuggis Ruggish came out, I was like, I just went through an operation for you know a, a, an operation on my arm, mm-hmm. um, and then um, and uh, other than that, though, I was in and out of, for example, uh, hospitals, mm-hmm. and then of course um, jail as well, and mm-hmm. then ultimately. Um, not drug related or anything. I ended mm-hmm. up getting locked up in like 1999 for, uh, I think it was trumped up, uh, charges for assault with a deadly weapon where I only brandished the weapon, but had yeah. it in 10 years for just brandishing yeah, we gon- the weapon. We're going to get to that. A- yeah, yeah, we're going to get to that. So Thuggish yeah. Ruggish Bone come, Thuggish Ruggish comes out in 93, uh, yep. 94, 93. It goes, what, five time platinum yeah. or some shit like that? Yep. It, yeah. go, it went big, like it went like gold, double, uh, platinum, double, triple, yeah. and then it kept going. It's still, and you know, you know, yeah. these, and they're they're still going to, and, and every day, every day, uh, some new individual somewhere in God's existence uh, discovers all of our music, yeah, yeah, and still doing well to this day. Thank God. So and I hope it continues. So you a kid from the hood, bro? You going through what you are going through? You know, you kind of trying to keep this this monkey off your back with the drugs and different things like that. So you got, I mean, listen, I was listen, y'all shit was on TV and radio all day every day. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. you know, so mm-hmm. for that, I mean, what is that doing? What is that experience for you like psychologically? Because you're dealing with real life, and I don't know if oh, maybe yeah. if maybe your life has changed from you know you're yeah. reaping the benefits of what you're doing. You know, I don't know if that's even going on yeah. but what was how you know what did that feel like because y'all was on y'all was like oh. top 10 for a minute at least number one for oh, yeah. at least a few months what I, I can tell you one thing for sure that is it was assuring and affirmation and confirmation because i tell you one thing this before i went anywhere and i used i, I would pray and i still do pray to to my to my to my god my lord that uh to give me the strength and the tools that i need to succeed and still to this day he answers my prayers so um it's a feeling for me of complete 100 percent um an affirmation and confirmation of how much power and strength i really have because even as a young kid and as a young boy you know i would i would ask god for help Mm -hmm. and and every time i ask god for help he would bring me through the situation with challenges and help me to remind me that remember you asked me for help. I would think that I would not going to make it and I would end up making it. And then here I am. So, and, and, and that's something, that's something that, uh, and still to this day, um, um, with the thug hearing thuggish ruggish on the radio for the first time, it, it, it turned me into a real, real, uh, uh, uh God conscious mm-hmm. individual. Okay. You did with yeah. super so, God conscious individual to the point to where I don't neglect my prayers. I don't neglect, you know, and I, 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 I try to ask God for as much help as possible, even though we try to do it all on our own. Yeah. Um, um, God mm-hmm. answer my prayers. And I, I'm, I'm really humble. For, I'm grateful for that. I don't have a problem with speaking. This is what I, I write about this in my book. Yeah. And I'm telling people that you're a year. If you, if you, if it, if you look around you or whatever the case, may be or if you can look at one of your accomplishments yeah and if you have to be joking or kidding yourself if you can look around you or look at any one of your accomplishments and think that something outside of you or greater than you didn't help you do that look right. around you <clears throat> right do you think the outside world the nature and all of that actually came from the mind of nothing you yourself are from the mind of something way far greater and superior than yourself some you're you're you come from the mind of something that's 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 words cannot describe right. you're, you're 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 the creation of something you came out of the mind of something so that what you come up with and your accomplishments you have to associate and attribute it to that all you have to do is look around you go outside and look around that's all i got to say mm-hmm. so I, I say all of that to say that um, it, 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 it was, uh, and you, and you can be surprised, you can be happy, you can be, uh, all that type of stuff. But one thing that I don't do court is get too far above myself with 
cockiness, yeah, arrogance, right, conceitedness, negativity, mm-hmm. being a jackass, being an asshole, being a all of that stuff is easy to do. Mm-hmm. You dig what I'm saying? It's real hard to keep your two feet planted and your on ground and say yes sir or yes ma'am to your elder or even your wife even mm-hmm. your your brother yeah your when's the man you dig what i'm saying it's, it's it's so it's so hard to be humble we said we we just want to be a bad ass like fuck this fuck we just want to be a bad ass so bad mm-hmm. you dig what i'm saying mm-hmm. that you want to just say fuck everybody sometime i did this shit all by myself fuck y'all mm-hmm. you dig what i'm saying it's so easy to do that well, you know, the Bible you say, that, and you know, uh, you know, saying ego go before the fallen man. You know what I mean? It's, it's, and we get so many examples of that. And I try mm-hmm. so hard not to be on that level, bro. Yeah, and, yeah. you know, I just try to stay focused and work on the next. You know, I have a plan and I try to uh, plot out my plan, get my all of my eyes dotted and my T's yeah. crossed. And I try to just execute the plan. And it's real simple. Yeah. From doing what I had to do with bone from doing what I have to do by myself, making it through prison or whatever the case may be. You have to be focused. You have to have to plan. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. What the fuck you're going to do, man? Right. What, what, what else you're going to do, bro? You know what I'm saying? Get your ass out the house, go have a, a cup of tea with, with a home girl or whatever, decide to have a family. If not, if you don't just whatever, just do what you got to do. Kick it with the, the homies, man, just have fun. Enjoy yourself. Mm-hmm. It's real. It's like I say, it's so easy that that pride, the ego, <clears throat> uh, the pride become for the fall, bro. There's so many examples of that. The shit is, in, it, the shit is crazy. The hey, shit so is let, crazy. So let me ask you, bro. Uh, so you dealing with what you was dealing with during that time and say maybe you were self-medicating. Why do you think, you right. know, what, what, what were you, because you had to be in pain. You're dealing with something internally. You know right. what I'm saying? What do right. you think that stemmed from? Because a lot of times in the hood, we don't talk about mental illness. We don't talk about PTSD right. and we don't talk about trauma. You know what I mean? Right. Do you think that right. you were, you know what I'm saying, self-medicating, trying to deal with something that you didn't know was there? Well, you know, you can, you uh, you can, only you can be able to get in there and figure out what that is. Mm-hmm. And you already have the answers to whatever it is that you need. You don't need nobody's help with that except whoever you talk yeah. to, whatever, if that's what you decide to do. Um, but uh, you do have a, a situation to be able to deal with uh, or, or, or to overcome, you know, call them uh, uh, baggage or demons or stuff of that nature, you know, whatever the case may be experiences everybody come across you know happen to be able to be strong enough to say no to this or that you know yeah. what i'm saying yeah. uh, not everybody's going to be hooked on the sherm or the coke sure. or hooked on prostitution and all this other yeah. shit whatever yeah. the case i always be. say man yeah, not everybody not, not i always say man you know yeah. some of your bad chapters in life can lead to great stories you know what i'm saying we all have a story everybody you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Has to over. That's the mm-hmm. journey. You know what I mean? And quite honestly, and that's your journey. Yeah, quite honestly, you know, is. success is a culmination of failures. You know what I'm saying? So you got to go through Absolutely. those hardships. It it creates mm-hmm. character. You know what I mean? And that's when you really know what you made of. Because anybody can mm-hmm. shine and anybody can look good when everything is mm-hmm. beautiful and everything's laid out. But you mm-hmm. really get to see what you made of when your back's against the wall. That's when you really see Absolutely. where what you got and where you at within yourself. You know what I mean? So and, it's a testament yeah, to your strength, the fact that you made it through all that. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, I'm sure that, yeah. you, you know, we not too far. We, you're only a few years older than me. So we came up in yeah. the crack era, you know. So right. we know how hostile the streets was, you know. And I'm sure, just yeah. like my family, I'm sure crack or drugs touched your family as well. You know what I'm saying? Oh, so yeah, having absolutely. to deal with absolutely. that and deal with the pressures of the streets and then hear, you know, you went to the music business the same way I did. You know what I mean? Right. So... Right. I'm curious. Once so once the the thuggish ruggish bone comes out, you you released the you were the first bone to release a solo album, right? Absolutely. So how did you land yep, that deal first, with Def Jam? Like how did that come about? So we had I, I had a few powers of be that was working. Lazy Bone was helping me to uh, bring that into fruition, and uh, at the same time, uh, Relativity records was there we were uh launching mo thug records so at the same time simultaneously while we were doing thuggish ruggish bone for the love of money going into east 1999 eternal yeah, yeah. we had a plan mm. to uh launch solo 
of records and we had this agreed upon before we even did the group stuff said it's okay mm -hmm. once we do the group stuff we're going to focus mm -hmm. on branching off mm -hmm. as uh with solo projects and other uh, group projects uh, assigning other people be it that as it may yeah. and that's exactly what happened right um, um uh, we started working um on um the most uh, family scriptures stuff and then at the same time while we were working on that but i was working on three projects simultaneously yeah the bone thugs and harley project yeah the Mo Thug project mm -hmm. and the Flesh and Bone solo project. Yeah. So I had my hands full. Yeah. I was trying my best to make sure that I was, I had like literally three studios popping off at one time that I had to be at every day, so a couple hours here, a couple hours here, a couple hours there. Yeah. And that was my schedule for like two years straight. Yeah. We're just working on solo stuff, group stuff, and Mo Thug stuff. So yeah. We um uh, we we had it planned out. And I think I you know I'm the first individual to have uh, solo success in the group, group, and I'm you know I'm humble and I'm grateful for that. Let's talk about that album. Let's, let's the talk. Guys. Let's mm -hmm. talk about that album, Flesh. So it was true, True's mm -hmm. Thugs, uh, True's Humbly United Gathering Souls. That was the name of it, right? Oh yeah, yeah. And yep. that was Def Jam. That album with gold is probably platinum by now, huh? It's with gold. It's about triple platinum. When it yeah. gold ultimately doubled and triple yeah. platinum, okay. it's still selling to this day. Yeah. So as you know, yeah. I remember when that yeah. album came out, bro, and it was a, uh, you know, you had a fresh sound, and and you know, you kind of, yeah. I don't know, you your style and your approach to that album was very unique because it was. I don't know. Right. It was like spiritual and it was like yeah. it was like inspirational and positive but gangster at the same time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it was almost yeah. like a like a which most of us as humans we are walking contradictions. I know I'm one. My mama called yeah. me one all the time. But <laughs> it was like cuz you know right, you had right, right. like you had the uh the first song that kicked in. You know, it was about trying to be a decent right. motherfucker. It was a you know feel good. But then you had exactly. songs that you did. What's the one that you did with BG Knockout? Like, what was it? Was, it? Uh, 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 no Mercy. No Mercy. Then no, you had was, shit yeah. like No Mercy. No Mercy. You know what I mean? Right. You know. But right. my favorite was, my favorite record on there, like I was telling you, was North Coast, bro. Like, that right. was... I right. had never heard a record like that, you know, real talk, right. because it was like some G-Funk, like jazz. Right. It's the first time I ever heard a gangster record with a with a right. saxophone on it you know what i'm saying that, yeah that so was, what what made you take that approach like that when like, you heard that music did you you heard that beat mm -hmm. like oh i'm fucking with that oh yeah 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 that was one that was that was that was presented to me um 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 in 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 those uh, uh, beautiful sessions that we used to have that was presented to me man and you know i think damon elliott was the guy uh, the big bro that uh that brought that to the table but mm -hmm. damien elliott had his hands uh, 100 all the way in on the creative elements of the uh whole true some the united gathering souls album mm -hmm. my first solo album and the second album mm -hmm. and to, to be uh, to, to be it in, in fact so damien elliott was like really really heading up uh, most of the production mm -hmm. And even though we had a bunch of guys coming to the table from uh, the Tony C's, the Kenny McLeod, the the oh yeah, uh, the, Kenny's the, the DJ homie. Uniques, yeah, Kenny, yeah, that's yeah. my partner. All of, yeah, you know, even still to this day, I'm still in bed and just still working with all those dudes mm -hmm. to keep the door open to work with a variety of all the young, fresh talent, be it mm -hmm. that as it may. Even to this day, but mm -hmm. those guys would come and they would have people to play real life instruments yeah yeah real talk. i mean the sessions would be set up where the drums are in that corner the the sax over here and then mm -hmm. but we it was a, it was a few a matter of fact i forgot the name of the sax player but he was a famous sax player yeah yeah the sax player that played that 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 on that on the north coast he yeah. was a famous one if not the name slips to mind but i gotta look on the credits yeah but he's on there famous sax player yeah came through and that's what we used to get we used to get really, really well-known um, uh, musicians that did their thing mm -hmm. and specific instruments used to come in yeah. and play those instruments live versus yeah. playing, you know, you know, you can do your thing on a keyboard and all that shit, but having a um, musician come in and play it live was a yeah. whole total That was the kick. first that I heard that, um, to be honest with you, that yeah. was the first I heard on a rap record where you had a saxophone, a live saxophone like that and played. It was right. like some sexy jazz shit. Like you could just take a bitch up PCH playing oh, that yeah. shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? That shit, that exactly. shit was gangster. Exactly. Yeah, North Coast was hard. North Coast was that's hard. That's exactly North Coast what was you do 
Hey, let right. me ask you. Let me ask you, Flesh. Even though that was one of my favorite songs, I listen, bro. Hey, and you know I can be transparent. Yeah. Yes, what did North Coast mean? Where is like I did What is that? What, what North was that? Coast. So 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 it was, it was essentially the North Coast of Ohio because okay. Cleveland, Cleveland, right? Mm-hmm. If, if you think in terms of Cleveland, Ohio, Cleveland, Cleveland is of the North. North at the right spank, spank in the middle, almost uh, 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 north. And that's where it came from. Okay. You know, when we were creating the, the chorus line for North Coast, we were saying, the lady was singing, was like, come and ride on, on the, the north, north side. side. Yeah, so, yeah. and then she was saying, she, she was saying, come and ride on the east side, come and ride on the south side. Yeah. And I was like, no, 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 fuck that, fuck that. <laughs> Only north side. Yeah. Yo, speaking come to someone from the north side, the... speaking yeah, to someone yeah, from the north yeah. side, we played that shit constantly yeah yeah so <laughs> so she went she was trying to add all of the north the north yeah. south east and west coming right on the west yeah. side i was yeah. like nah cut all that out yeah no we just gonna say north side on this one right now because no but that's what it was it was cleveland ohio is northern ohio so that's where that came ah. from they tried to put the west okay. coast in there it would have had the west coast west side west uh, yeah. north side south side yeah in there, but i I totally changed that. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I didn't Only know what I didn't know what it meant, bro. But I was singing. I've been singing that shit for twenty five years. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't know what the fuck it meant. I was like, shit. Right, one day I'm right. about to ask Stack what the shit what that shit mean. But that shit was hard yeah, as classic. Exactly. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's what's up, bro. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, you man. so Dude, so you that. do that, man. You got the success of that. Now let me ask you, and I could be wrong, but so you had an animated album cover. Were you in jail mm-hmm. at when that was released as well? Were you locked up? Mm. No, which uh, no, no, Truth no. Humbly that United not, Gather Souls. No, no, there was an artist that decided we mm-hmm. decided to paint a portrait for that. Album. Okay, I wasn't locked up yet. Okay, so okay. we came up with the idea to do something of a portrait, a uh-huh. portrait to where someone goes in and just draw a portrait, thinking of put the the earth space flesh coming out of space sort of type, and that's yeah. what the yeah. artist took yeah. that and ran. It was with, dope. It was dope. I liked it. Yeah. It was dope. You know what though, yeah. Flesh? Hey, on some real shit stack, I think we should do a video to North Coast, bro. Just like You think so? I think we should just fucking do it, dog. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Me and Ken okay. direct that bitch. I mean, we need to, you know what I'm saying? We need wow. yeah, we need oh, to okay. do a video to that bitch. Yeah. Just because. Just because, my okay. nigga. Just so, because. so so this is what I want you. I want y'all to sit down when as soon as y'all get a break and yeah. get a chance and, and let's come up with a treatment and send it to me. Okay. And and now, uh, and uh, on my next visit, we can uh, one of my next visits, we can uh, once you guys come up with the treatment for that, y'all yeah. live with that, yeah, come up with the treatment. Let's go in there, and knock them out three, four hours. We're done, whatever location y'all go. go I'm scout, down, bro. Go yeah. scout the I location. just shot a music video last week for yeah. the homie, uh, Chris Calico, yeah, yeah, he just yeah. shot one for Chris Calico, yeah, okay. So, 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 so court. You got that. Yep. You and Ken. Yep. Y'all put up. Y'all. Y'all put together the yep. treatment, and we're gonna shoot the video for North Coast. All right. You see, we got we got you on tape. You know we recording this uh, stack. <laughs> 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 you know we recording this is going out to the world. That's what's up. That's <laughs> yeah. That's, that's we gonna do up. that. Let's we do gonna do that. Um, Let's do it. All right. So so with the success of so you got solo success, but I, I skipped the beat. Tell, talk to me about East 99, because that, that's probably y'all most successful album as a group, right. is East 99. Man, talk oh, about yeah. the, talk about so, the explosion you know, of, of, of Crossroads, yeah. breaking records right. and shit. So East 99 was a special album in general, because this was the album that uh, Easy e was really, really looking forward to being able to, he had a, a, a special hand in the launch of creeping on the come up but mm-hmm. east 1999 was special because this was the real real breakout mm-hmm. artist of a uh, 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 album of the artist uh mm-hmm. introduced by easy e right mm-hmm. and when he got sick when he got sick and didn't recover mm-hmm. um um is when the idea for crossroads came and everything and the there was remix. a bunch of stuff yeah. going on man because yeah. i remember a, like, i remember the original um version of yeah. crossroads because y'all sampled uh i think it was castlevania yeah. it was a sample from yeah. a video game and then y'all remixed yeah. it yeah when we did remix and it was a lot of remixes too and then unfortunately you know unfortunately i did play a role and um 
and had verses on a lot of that shit court, mm-hmm. but it was uh, whatever powers that be might have been too scared scaring people, the, the too too wild scaring people. But mm-hmm. um, 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 I kind of like got my finger on it. Now I understand what was going on, but mm-hmm. you know I had verses originally on a lot of songs already, like uh, first of the month, crossroads, uh, whatever mm-hmm. you, whatever you want to call it. I had yeah. verses his original verses on there but then people came in and was like uh whether you know you know uh uh no we need to take flesh off that song wow type shit a lot of that shit went on and uh, uh that's one of the twists that i talk about in my my new book coming yeah. out and uh because a lot of fans don't you know, know what that. And you know then, what uh, a lot of fans don't know you know what huh? stack now that i think about it bro you right like if you think about it let me see you weren't on east 99 cover you weren't on Art right. of War cover, and you wasn't in jail right. yet. You wasn't in jail yet because right. you didn't go to jail till when? 2000, 2001? 2000. Yeah. 2000. Why weren't you on right. uh on East ninety nine? I'm cover. Right. Well, that's that. That's what I'm saying. You know. You know. That, well, I'm sure if Easy E would have been around, that mm-hmm. I would have been on there because it was Easy E that made sure that my image was on creeping on. Yeah. On yeah. The yeah. Come up. He was yeah. the one that took that photo. He's the one that put that whole album cover right. together, and the one he personally took that he held the light in front of me mm-hmm. and held the light of he had me hold the light with the light shining on yeah, my face. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. that. Bam, yeah, that became yeah. the album cover. So he went, you know, Easy E. You know, we we had a really really cool working relationship. Mm-hmm. I was wild, well, pretty much the only one considered that can deal with the flesh, and that was cool enough to even have patience enough to handle. Yeah. Yeah. What, what I was going through else after he passed everybody else that came in handling this business after that they did a good job to a certain degree but what I don't agree with was them not having the ability or the understanding how to deal with somebody because I, I was on straight protecting my shit I wasn't on, I wasn't too raw raw where I'm at at niggas like all crazy I'm like no this is bone thug this is flesh this is lay crazy wishing busy and I'm gonna protect that and I felt that motherfuckers needed that was was afraid of my authority when it came to protecting the brand. Oh, okay. So and you it think... was a wild churned <clears throat> out nigga. Yeah. It was I was a thinker. Bro, bro don't, don't mind you. I was a I was a straight A student. Mm-hmm. Motherfuckers forget that. Mm-hmm. I was a I'm I'm still a bookworm. Mm-hmm. All the power is right here and in here. You dig what I'm saying? But what I was dealing with was a lot of folks was like, nah, fuck that. I'm scared of him. Let's get him uh, out of the picture. Okay. But it's like, bitch, how you how you gonna put that genie back in him? How the fuck you gonna get rid of flesh and bone, my nigga? I'm the big, I'm the, the, the who the fuck you think the big bro would, but they tried to get rid of flesh mm-hmm. and bone. But the problem is, is that that genie, it's like putting the genie back in a bottle. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? How mm-hmm. do you you can't put the toothpaste? It's like putting toothpaste back inside of the tube. Right. You can't do it and without making a, a scattery mess. Yeah. So I went through a lot of shit. East 1999 was a very, very pivotal, pivotal album, you know, you know, because uh, I was, you know, a lot of the stuff that I was going against the grain with was motherfuckers like, yeah, not, not, like you can't get rid of me. Mm-hmm. That's like, how you going to get rid of, you know, you know, how you how you going to do that? You, you, you going to, yo, you, you want to get rid of me? How? Nigga, I'm the. I'm the baddest, coldest. I'm like Muhammad Ali. I'm pretty. I'm the prettiest <laughs> motherfucker in bone. I'm the baddest mother. I'm the most gorgeous thing bone does. I'm the. I'm the. I'm gorgeous. So so that that I'm trying to be humble. Yeah. But my, how the fuck you gonna get rid of flesh though, bro? Flesh yeah. is like almost the essence in a sense, the yeah. spirit of the whole situation. Mm-hmm. But they tried. Um, Crossroads came about. First of the month came about. All of that. Those records that make up. Um, um, East 1999 came about. You dig what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And, and here Easy E is on his deathbed. It was a turning point. It was pivotal. But um, um, Easy was looking forward to seeing that he 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 wasn't alive to see the release of that album, but mm-hmm. he was around to be able to um, 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 A and R it, yeah. get the producers around involved with it, yeah. and all of the hard. Um, 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 uh, an administrative structural work that goes into it. He did all of that, but mm-hmm. eventually he passed. And that's why I think Crossroads took off so big because mm-hmm. the song originally was dedicated to him. Right. Wally, E, Boo, a, a lot of our, a, a lot of our friends in the hood was, uh, was, 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 was dying off. And yeah. we was like, damn, we really got to make something happen. But when Easy yeah. passed and when East 99 came out, we really thought that was the end of the road. Yeah. We didn't know it was, you know, we had yeah. to keep going and keep going, and but yeah. we did keep going. But 
it was real crucial um, at that point when he passed away and um, and the, the album came out, they had surfaced with a whole new staff, a whole new record company staff. You did what I'm saying. And, yeah. and, 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 and uh, um, it, uh, it, it marked a new beginning, yeah. a weird one, because he wasn't in the picture no more. Right. Here are these people trying to keep the business alive. Bone yeah. Thugs and Harmony is the hottest thing in the world. And they did the best they can to surround us with all of the professionals mm-hmm. that, that they could to keep the boat and keep the boat afloat. And they did they did do a good job. But at the same time, you know, I still, you know, with the, mm-hmm. I still would have dealt with flesh a, a yeah. little bit more. Uh, yeah. um, and, and I would if it, if, it, if it was me, I would have been able to deal with flesh. Those people couldn't deal with flesh. I, I still you. made my mark. I still yeah. I still pissed on my fire hydrant and marked my territory, whether they like it or not. And I'm still here, yeah. whether they like it or not. Let me ask you this, uh, Flesh. So with the release, y'all started Mo Thugs. And I know you had the Mo Thugs imprint through uh, Relativity. And you released right. uh, the first the first Mo Thug Family Scriptures. Um, mm-hmm. when you did that, you guys started putting on your guys from your city. You know, you had graveyard exactly. shift, poetic hustlers, yep. uh, true. Yep. You know, I remember all yep. of that. Um, after, yep. after math, uh, uh yep, yep. Yeah, Ken Dog, yep. Yeah. Yep. So Ken y'all dog. lost, y'all lost a, uh, a couple soldiers. Um, you lost uh what, what was the situation? I was always curious. What was the situation with Tombstone? Well, Tombstone was like, um, he was he, he was another homie so close. He was a family member in a sense. Mm-hmm. He was uh, married to a crazy bone sister. Mm-hmm. They had a child together. Mm-hmm. Um, um, and uh, I don't, you know, it was one of those instances. He got, he was in the hood and he took a bullet. And, um, and uh, yeah, but uh, uh, prior to that, he was uh, as creative was, he was a producer, writer and all that, a composer and all mm-hmm. of that. He composed all of that graveyard shit mm-hmm. album. Mm-hmm. <laughs> which was uh, one of the uh, artist albums um, out of Moth Thug that had some of the great success. So, the, mm-hmm. you know, them dudes was coming out of Moth Thug Records selling 200, 300, 400,000 copies. Yeah. That's how much success Moth Thugs was having. And, yeah, Moth Thugs was, was in, type of success. yeah, Moth Thugs yeah. was in y'all bag for a minute because when y'all, that first yeah. family scriptures went probably platinum, double platinum, something right. like that. And yeah, then y'all yeah, came with, because you had, because uh, the single was, uh, uh, what was the single? Um, I right. remember it. Yeah, it was uh the one the video that um, they had. Um, damn, I can't the, think the of barbecue, it. the barbecue, the barbecue and the, the baseball video, the bar- game. Dude, yeah, you had, yeah, yep, you had the ghetto cowboy, ghetto cowboy. The, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, damn, uh, yeah. Uh, it was a uh, family. It my mind, but yeah, yeah, it's the yeah. barbecue. But the family the, tree. Family tree. Family. I think it's no, called no, family tree. It wasn't called no. no it wasn't no, family no. tree. What is it, Ken? Uh, Motha of Family Scriptures. I, I remember the Ghetto Cowboy song. Ghetto Cowboy was a big song. Yeah, that was one of the biggest singles. But what was the other one? It was the... Uh, Thug Devotion. Thug Devotion. Yeah, think, yeah. Thug yeah, Devotion. I also Thug remember, Devotion. as a white dude who yeah. was rapping in Sacramento, I also remember Ghetto Cowboy because you had Powder. Powder. Powder P. Right, right. Powder yeah. P. Powder P. Powder P. There you go. Got yeah, a 12 yeah, gauge. Go. Powder P, that's it. <laughs> On the front but yeah, page. Yeah, so yeah, that, that uh-huh. stuff, man, we was able to kick out the door fresh out the gate, even before our careers can really, really be etched in stone. Yeah. We started bringing out the homies in the hood, and that's how that's how it was. So we, we, we whose idea it, was that? Everybody. Who, whose idea was to say, you know what, we're going to start Mo Thug, we're going to put the homies on? Like, whose idea was well, that? Well, you know what? I, you know what? That might have been a little bit of all of us because we all had homies that mm-hmm. we wanted to uh, 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 make sure that they – um came through who actually I ran it like who who crazy. who actually ran um, day-to-day operations and handled the business with relativity you know like who actually got the budgets got the videos did and did all that who, who was that was that? between that was between cray and lay okay that was dealing with that it was supposed to be a thing to where all bone members had a, a a seat at the table when it came to the uh the administrative and yeah. the officers involved and, uh, but it only, but ultimately, it, it ended up being Cray and Late that delegated that, and kind of mm-hmm. like was, uh, I don't know, was, I would have dealt with it. I would have handled it a lot differently, yeah. and I did handle it a lot differently yeah. because I'm still, I, I still have, you know, it, it, it became a competition and whose groups was gonna come through and do what. So you know, mm-hmm. I had my boys. And that's why the aftermath and all those dudes, you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. came out on my solo album. And they did ah, some stuff, okay, a few pieces on there and everything. But it was it became one of those things where it's like, 
Okay, no, I, no, it's, no, I'm, I got my group. I got my group. I got, okay, what about my groups? Yeah. You dig what I'm saying? It became one of those yeah, situations, yeah. but it, so, it was still. <laughs> so then you come out, they come out with uh, Mo Thug, Family Scriptures 2. And that, right. uh, what was the single on that one? Was that Ghetto Cowboy on oh, that one? Yeah, Ghetto Cowboy. Yeah, Ghetto Cowboy, number two, yeah. Number two, yeah. Because I know my right. shit, my shit on there was that uh, that first one. Uh, mighty right. mighty warrior, that one yeah. with Soldier oh, Boy. Man, uh, yeah, with Soldier yeah. Boy. With Soldier Boy. Those, yeah, that, yeah, that was a smash. That was definitely yeah. a smash. Yeah, sure that shit was. bring back memories yeah. right there. Then <clears throat> y'all came up with Art of War. Oh, the two man, mm-hmm. the Doug double Love. CD. Doug you know what I'm saying? Right. Double CD. So you 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 were on one of my favorite songs on that one, uh, which was uh. Mo Thug, mm-hmm. we all right. Mo Thug. That shit goes so hard, mm-hmm. and y'all, it's like y'all Mo brought back Thug. in the 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 instrumentation, the live instrumentation on that one too. You know. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. So so that, even that, though that, you that, were that, very that, much a, a part of that album and you were all over it, you still wasn't on the album yeah. cover. Still wasn't on the album cover. <laughs> yep. Wow. Yep. Wow. Yeah. But for the, yeah, for the life of me, it's, and and it could have been you know whatever it was you know you know you know flesh. I was going through a lot at mm-hmm. that time, and that was at the heat. It was I was going through a lot of uh, 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 drug treatment at that time too. Okay. But still, it was a lot of powers that be that mm-hmm. behind the scenes that was kind of like you know not mm-hmm. really really comfortable with flesh being around type shit. Where mm-hmm. what it, it was it was a lot of that that had to do with it. Mm-hmm. Sound like you was off the chain, yeah, Stack. <laughs> well, you was off the well, chain. Well, yeah, huh? yeah. I kind I kind of like was, bro, bro. I'm glad I like was, and I'm glad I'm here today yeah, and, and to still here today. It. But, you know, I, I just pushed a hard line. And, you know what I'm saying? I really wasn't too, you know, you know, you know, crazy mm-hmm. about, you know, the people that came in and started running the business, you know, after E passed away and all that, I wasn't too crazy about those folks. They didn't like me and I didn't like them. You know what I'm saying? It was like, so it was like one of those types of situations, but you know, you know, the business was still is, it is what it is, you know, you know, able to do what we got to do. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, the auto work one and two, you know, that's another record where I went in there and recorded for like almost a hundred percent of it, and they stripped me. They, it was like I'm like I said, I'm writing about it. Yeah. But they went in there and decided to take me off everything except one or two songs, and uh, yeah, that's that. Wow. So let me so let me ask you this, stack. So I mean, through you got a you got a platinum uh solo record. You got these at this mm-hmm. point, y'all probably you know at that point you're probably at twenty thirty million records sold. Um. So right. I'm assuming you're making a little bit of money. Mm-hmm. Okay. What did, I'm curious. What did you do when you got your first piece of money? What What did you do? Like, mm-hmm. what did you splurge on? Well, you know what? I was a, a I was a bit of a penny pincher, and I like to save a lot. But mm-hmm. I did uh, d- 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 get a home over there in uh in uh, California, out mm-hmm. there in uh the valley. I mm-hmm. was able to get in something real cool and comfortable. And uh, but I've I've always been a penny pincher. I've always been mm-hmm. able to tuck a tuck and stash away a yeah. little something here and there. Okay. And um, and it wasn't until later in life I started doing other stuff. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And investments and stuff of that nature. Okay. And um, and learning how to play the stock market, learning how to do uh, day day trading, learning how to do other other types of things, invest in this business that business and uh, that's what i'm into today okay on top of still of course crushing the music and everything learning just 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 being just just vocal when it comes to being an investor yeah no matter what it is right 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 and uh whether it makes sense to invest in it but i was able to be able to uh uh um um um, get a home Mm -hmm. that i that of course, I eventually, you know, lost that home due mm-hmm. to due to my troubles and right, right. and needing the millions because they took they knocked a chunk out of me. It was, you know, I had bills, you know, bail. I was paying bail at that time for half a million dollar bills, and it was ridiculous. You did yeah. what I'm saying, and, you know. I don't think it was fair for them to be setting that type of price uh, uh, on on on, t- on my bill, but I did end up having to pay like a couple five hundred thousand dollar bill, end up sp- spending like almost a, a million and some change and just bail money alone. Damn. And, a, and the attorney bill didn't make that no no light. You know yeah. the attorneys getting hundred 
50 here, 50 there, 100 yeah. here, 150 there, just to deal with that type of stuff. So I so I wasted a lot of money uh, mm-hmm. coming up dealing with that type of drama yeah. with uh, bail, uh, 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 court, uh, 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 attorney fees and yeah. stuff in that nature. It cost me an arm and a leg. Yeah, yeah. So, so the Art of War comes out, and I mean, it does phenomenal. It's probably, what, four or five, six-time platinum, mm-hmm. you know. Um, it did. So now, so yep. that, I know that's about 97, 98. So now nice. you fast yeah. forward to Resurrection, which was I maybe, think it was Resur- yeah. Resurrection was the album that came out right before I hit the prison. I, right. I could we was getting ready to shoot the videos for it, and then voila, here I go, I get locked up. But yeah. that was the first album to my chagrin, but to my surprise, yeah, that they left me alone. Yeah, that, yeah. The Resurrection is an example of how I rocked on all the previous albums, except mm-hmm. on Resurrection. Mm-hmm. Instead of taking me off the song, they mm-hmm. literally left me on it. Yeah, yeah. Resurrection was dope. Resurrection was dope. Um, so as now, you, as you see, as you as you as you you can go in there and see that I'm pretty much on every song yeah. except one on Resurrection. Yeah. And um, yeah, 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 yeah. Which I but think was that, it was I, just Busy's. Yeah. Uh, I think just Busy solo song. I think was it. Uh, yeah, I think he had the one little sing songy song. It was a solo song, and mm-hmm. then another song in which Cray busy and lazy did by themselves so it's actually two songs out of mm-hmm. the 14 songs that are on that album i think it's 14 or 15 songs on that album so busy solo song there's a solo song with busy mm-hmm. and then there's a trio song with lazy busy and cray mm-hmm. that uh that i'm not on but man i rocked the hell out of that album yeah that's the yeah. first album that i was yeah. able to here on pretty much 90 percent of the whole album yeah that album was classic and i think it went a platinum double platinum some shit like that oh yeah you're sitting on triple yeah. Yeah, that was it that was a cool double triple yeah. platinum cool. yeah yeah it, so it, now it, it, it was success it was just huge success but i got locked up right before the album was released and yeah. right when we were getting ready to go shoot the videos right I just got locked up, was up. so i want to go through was- the, i want to go through the incident stack i want you to clear it up because over you know over the years you hear so much shit you know i heard you know i didn't heard you had a fucking stick of dynamite you know four ak's yeah. you killed your neighbor you yeah, kidnapped was- the white bitch all kind of crazy shit right so yeah and, and i think you was in canyon country or chatsworth something like that right that's worse. That's yeah, that, well, that, no, that was nice. Well, that was nice. It's so, so it was, it's, it's so many incidents. All of those incidents had the ring, a, a slight ring of truth to it. Okay. Because the, the dynamite, the all the little fun was actually M80s. Um, the neighbor with the on the roof. Yeah. Um, I heard that. All of that with the, all of that stuff. That was all in 1996, 1997, and then another incident in 1998. But the incident that happened in 1999 is where i just uh had an ak-47 in the baby crib you know what i'm saying Mm -hmm. and i pulled it out and and cleared my house out because i had people in my house that was annoying me so i pulled my gun out and and i told motherfuckers to get out and then when they got out they came back with the police and that's how i ended up in prison okay so so let me ask you stack You, you you asked them to leave politely the first time and they would leave or you just felt like you had to pull the chop out to get the understanding yeah 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 i'm like man get on i told you know i'm asking them. i got a house full of people and i'm telling them to get on and instead of leaving they just started trying to bang on me in my house like nigga this crib nigga this is like it's not in here not in here you're not let me show you okay cool I got a nice ass AK-47 for your ass next time you come at me like that in my house, nigga. And, so hold uh, on. So these supposed to be street niggas that you cleared out. They went and called the police? They went and called the police. Some street niggas. Wow. Wow. See, I didn't know that. See, I thought that was all one situation. I thought you pulled an AK-47 on the neighbor. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So it's two different. No, these were these were these were some people that was in my house that was being disrespectful inside my house. They was mm. disrespecting me and the, and the people in my house. So I asked them to leave, yeah. real, um, where real real calmly and plainly. And they uh, instead of leaving, they started getting belligerent and, mm-hmm. uh, and disrespectful even more, and, and even threatened people. Mm-hmm. You know, threaten me and, and the occupants of my home. And um, that was unacceptable. So I, you know, and then they started gang banging. 
mm-hmm. in in the house like like for real mm-hmm. you know, you going you going you going to cuz me and crit me all right here in my house like that so i pulled out the ak and i and i and i and i walked them out at gunpoint okay so so what they charge that's crazy so you in your house and motherfuckers don't want to leave your house what did they charge you with cuz you cuz motherfuckers won't assault. vacate your house they charged me with assault with a deadly weapon wow so you got that case so you already so the shit with the neighbor what happened with the neighbor what was what you cuz they said you put a gun on the neighbor no, well, I guess they were neighbors that lived in there. Yeah, they were. They they are. They could have left and went to their own shit, but instead they wanted to give me a hard time. So they were neighbors. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. I see. I see. Yeah. So, so the police come, they take you down, and then what happens? Mm-hmm. Well, here comes the whole another court, the whole court issue, the whole court case, county jail for eight, eight or nine months, but I didn't get out on bail on that. They deny me bail, and uh. And uh, and and basically, it was a uh, um, one of those situations where I ended up back in the same courthouse with the same judge that gave me uh, a, a break the first time and the second time, and I'm back into the third time. And it was like, enough is enough. You're you're a threat to the streets. You're a threat to society. We got to take you off the streets for a while. And here comes the ten years. Damn. So when you standing in the courtroom, and they hit you with that, I don't know what was it, 120 months. 100 months yeah like that yeah mm-hmm. they hit you with that what was you know what i'm saying because prior to that you had never really served a long stretch you know when they hit you with that what was the feeling like what did you think did you was you like fuck i fucked up or oh yeah it wasn't not, it wasn't nothing you can do it I, I was it was like yo why you know it was that it was that whole wave of remorse but it was like whatever and, mm-hmm. and you had to brush it off like that it was like okay um I'm finna have to deal with this. I took it on the chin, took it like a man, and that was that. I, I was feeling remorseful, but mm-hmm. it wasn't too much you can do with it. I was mm-hmm. already, you know, you know, sharpening up my kisus and sharpening up my knives and doing my push-ups and all mm-hmm. that stuff because I already knew it was coming. Yeah. So <laughs> and I you, was already ready. You for did it. your time uh, out here in the state in California. Mm-hmm. What facility was you at? Oh wow, I was at. Uh, I was at Delano, the the holding facility, Kern County, um, um, uh, with the, uh, what the fuck, the one Arn was uh, somewhere down in uh, Blythe. I forgot mm-hmm. the name of it. Uh, Arn, and it's not Arnwood. It was the other one, uh, uh, Chuckawalla. Mm-hmm. Um, so Chuckawalla, Kern County, uh, Pleasant Valley. It was about four of. Them. Mm-hmm. It was four, four, four. Uh, level three prisons all that i think chuck Wallet was a level two that i went to yeah. kern level three pleasant valley was level three i never hit a level four yeah. you know? i never i never had to go to a level four but kern county um pleasant valley uh, was uh level level threes and and chuck Wallet was a level two mm. and then i finally hit a level one my last year did they have you uh in gym pop or in sensitive needs because of your celebrity I was in gen, general population. Oh, okay. So they didn't have you. I was I, I was in I was in thick I was in a thick of the thick of the thick of the heat. I was in yeah, all that general population. Not I mean uh 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 uh, uh was it a piece of protective custody? Yeah. No, nah, I never had to do that. Oh, okay. So you know, the even with it, I used to deny it. They mm-hmm. they used to insist they used to insist on me, you know. Mm-hmm uh protective custody of but i always denied it yeah, yeah. i didn't want to i didn't want to live like that i had to i had to i had to i had to stretch out i had to be able to yeah i couldn't be locked yeah. up like that all the time yeah. yeah so that was real cool it was real cool you know what i'm saying that knew it came it came with its pros and its cons it's 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 uh it's friends and it's foes and uh but uh, uh you know i had that you know i had some rough edges had a few fights and all that yeah. what was the craziest thing that you is. uh what was the craziest thing that you've seen in there well, the craziest thing that I've seen is in the middle of a riot, um, um, individuals actually get shot in the middle of a riot mm-hmm. where I've, I've seen um, um, rioters um, shot to death. And, um, and and while you're on the ground, on when an alarm mm-hmm. from, a, from, you know, when, when they tell you to get on the ground and people are still up stabbing each other, ones that's it's getting shot by the, and then those same very people um, uh, 
carried off on a stretcher mm-hmm. and the ambulance that pull off on the side of the fucking prison and, and pack their ass up and pull them off. That was the most craziest shit, seeing people shot and then mm-hmm. drug off on a um, stretcher and, and a paddy wagon. Yeah, yeah. It had did a you, profound effect on me. Did you have, did, what kind of effect did it have on you? I mean, you seen niggas shot in the street. Was it different seeing them mm-hmm. shot in prison? Yeah, yeah, because the the dude shot in prison wasn't uh, the, was wasn't was 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 okay armed with a knife trying to hurt somebody else. So mm-hmm. I guess it's the same thing, you know. You know, to somebody trying to kill somebody else, and then I'm like, the, I'm the, and I used to think that it was crazy and something was wrong with it, but you know, you know, you got the you know police telling people to drop knives, and they're not they're not dropping their knives, and they're going mm-hmm. ham, and yeah, hey. Did you, uh, you know, you know, and you got this slaughtering people, and then, then, then the, the, those were the people that was getting shot. Yeah, and I had no problem with it because I could have been a dude getting stabbed up. Yeah, did motherfuckers ever try to press you? Did you have to knife? Oh up, hell yeah, they up? got they they got they they got they motherfucking ass kicked too if they did. Was I they, had a lot of bloody fist fights up in there. Was they was they pressing you just on some you you flesh and bone thinking you you oh, know yeah, trying yeah. to they test was, you on they some was shit? Pressing me, they was pressing me thinking that celebrity shit was a, a, a gateway to soft nigga time. Yeah, they thought that was soft. <laughs> they, they, they 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 thought that was a, they thought that was the 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 gateway to uh, uh, the we can we can take advantage in him and had him send us money on our books and you know we just gonna push up on him and all that man i had to i had to knock the shit out of a variety of and uh i've 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 uh beat to a bloody pulp a lot of people up in there man mm-hmm. and uh you know i've had i, I you know i've I, you know I, I can't say that i had my ass kicked because i've had real real good good square fair fights where i get knocked up a little bit but i seem to kind of like get just a little bit of a slight edge on them you dig what I'm saying? And yeah. I've had those ones where I literally beat the fucking daylights out of motherfuckers. You know what, Stack? Um, I get I, I get a I get the feeling, the Stack. I get I get a little feeling. You you enjoyed that shit when you fucked that nigga up. You you got some <laughs> some gratification from that. Yeah, some 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 little some little monster inside of me. Yeah, kind of like, yeah, because you say it with such glee. Like no, I no, because, fucked that no, motherfucker. <laughs> I think I'm real fortunate. I think I'm real lucky, man, because shit could have got real hectic. Man. Yeah. You know, cats, could, you, know, you know, sometimes, you know, cats didn't let, let didn't have to let me shoot fair ones and all this other stuff like that. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, some of the times I did get into it, but, you know, the police, they, 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 they either let you break it up or, uh, or they'll let you, you know, stump the shit out of a motherfucker because yeah. he, you know, that motherfucker's a troublemaker. Yeah, he violated. It's one of those type of things, you know, yeah. but I'm sure if, if, if motherfuckers wanted to smash me, they probably could, but that wasn't the case. Most of my altercations were one-on-ones. Did you and, get, was uh, any knife and, play? You get, was any knife play? Well, I had to, I had to, no, not, uh, well, fortunately, no, I never had to use my sticker, my okay. poker. I never had to use my little, my, my makeshift shank. Did you make my, one? My, did you know, did you learn how to make the little, the little shit? The little yes. Well, well, they, they were all given to me. I didn't have the patience to sit there for days and, and, yeah. and sharpen that type of shit. You yeah. talking about making a knife out of a plastic or, or Jimmy and your pen yeah. or something like that. Or a lot of those dudes get those uh, utensils out of the kitchen, yeah. but it takes up, you can make a knife, you know, out of uh, a bunch of uh, plastic uh, forks or plastic spoons, mm-hmm. even you dig what I'm saying, or you can use a pencil or you can use a pen there's a way to use a pen as a, a shank. So there was a lot of ways, but I never had the patience to do what I always, I, I had them always given to me. Yeah. Did you have to buy them or they just put you down with them? No, the first thing, first thing, one of some, to some, um, um, I received a little package from um, some guys and everything. And that shit was already my bag of noodles and, mm-hmm. and zoom zooms and wham whams. I'm like, what the fuck? I thought it was something to write with, but it was actually a fucking knife in there and it was like when you come out uh, I, when you come out to the yard make sure you had that tucked away i was like real stunned and like wondering what was going on because i was locked up but you know for having weapons and i was told don't come out of the cell unless you read you know because it's shit because I, I pulled up in the prison right when they were coming off of a lockdown so it was like it's, we might have some funk when we get off lockdown and i'm mm-hmm. like what the fuck is this man like for real okay yeah. cool all right but yeah. uh yeah, it, 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 it was a little bit shocker, though. It so was, how did it, it how did you do your time, bro? What did you spend your time doing? Because you don't strike me as a type yeah. that's just going to sit on your hands and do nothing. You know what I'm saying? Especially because you like to oh, read. Man, they, so yeah. did you did you we, study? Did you, you know what I'm saying, brush up on I your did. I studied a lot. I, I, I studied a lot. I read a lot. 
Um, I, I, I made a lot of music, a lot of the stuff that I'm working on, even still this to still to this day, I'm still going through my archives. I wrote so much music. I doubt if I even had the opportunity to remake all of it. Mm-hmm. And that's how much shit I wrote in mm-hmm. there. And it was a music program. And some, some of those prisons had music, uh, music uh, programs where mm-hmm. you can go in and, and they had recording capabilities. They had, uh, they had uh, producing capabilities. Mm-hmm. You can, you know, instruments, all of that stuff uh, to the point to where you can even rock a live band. Yeah. I was involved with a live band. I was in there being rock and roll flesh because they had this whole band that, that was assembled and everything. And I would be singing with them mm-hmm. and I'll be rapping and singing and shit. I, yeah. you know, the first image I got, you know, well, of course we, we did it before, but in prison, I was mm-hmm. really locked rocking out all the time, mm-hmm. almost every day with a live band that was some real stone cold rockers. Yeah. You dig what I'm saying? And we had, and we had that luxury, mm-hmm. uh, believe it or not. And then I had the luxury of being able to do some recording because we would take our radios and jimmy them up and turn them into a microphone. You could take the speakers out, flip them a certain way and use it as a microphone and we were able to record do some Mm -hmm. recording that way in the cell Mm -hmm. you dig what i'm saying and uh and and i did a lot of that shit so i I still i stay productive mostly doing that type of shit Mm -hmm. working out of course staying prayed up spiritual up and all that doing my stuff Mm -hmm. and uh and uh and uh trying to stay out the way really trying to stay out the way and make it day by day but that but you could not escape those altercations where sometimes Somebody's gonna test you. Mm-hmm. Riots jump off, man. All types of shit. Everything and some that can't happen does mm-hmm. go down in there, man. You just got to be on your toes. Yeah, yeah. And, and willing to and, and uh, guard yourself and guard your grill. So let me ask <laughs> you real. this. Let me ask you this, uh, Stack. So you in this motherfucker? You know, uh, bones still going, but your brothers are having problems. You know, because this is where kind of some of the 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 infighting is leaking out now. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, right. What are you like? You know what I'm saying? What are you thinking? What is your your thought process and how are you feeling? Because you watching the shit. They trying to keep it together. But during that time, yeah. it's a struggle. You know, busy going through what he going through. They fighting. You know, how right. did you deal with that? Were you trying to I mean, because you got yeah. your own struggle, obviously. But were right. you trying to mediate even from behind the wall? Oh, yeah, I was definitely trying to mediate um, to a certain degree behind the wall. And my main thing, and it did ultimately end up being able to, um, the guys being able to handle things and hold things together, even with being um, on, on a different page or whatnot. But the fellas was able to be able to uh, lay Cray and Wish was able to hold the group together enough yeah. to be able to win uh, an American Music Award yeah. right there. I think it was 19, I mean, 2007. No, that was Strength and Loyalty. 2006 or 2007. Yeah, that was Strength, strength and Loyalty. loyalty. That's what's, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they were able to hold that together enough to be able to do that. And then they also made a movie called Strength and Loyalty that featured Nipsey Hussle, rest in peace, was yep. uh, featured in that movie and everything. And they did that 2007. Mm-hmm. And then I got out in 2008. But my main thing, what I was speaking to the brothers, I used to try to tell them, mm-hmm. no matter at all costs, you guys mm-hmm. got to hold it together. We got, we still got uh, a, 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 a lot of longevity. We still have a legacy that we need to protect and we need to be able to build from. Um, even, you know, mm-hmm. because this prison situation, there's going to be post prison. There's going to mm-hmm. be, we're going to look back at this, and we're going to have an opportunity to all come together again and re and solidify um, our, our legacy with uh, 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 being a pioneers or whatever the innovators uh, that we are, we're still going to have a, a, a career to tend to. And that was my main thing, trying to motivate the best of my ability as mm-hmm. big bro, just motivate everybody to stay focused, no matter how much y'all fighting out there. Because when I come home, X, Y, and Z has to happen. We have right. to get together and be seen together and take photos together for one. We got to get in the studio for two, for three, we got to try to pull the shit together to try to, continue forward with them on for march forward so all of those things happen Mm -hmm. and here we are still to this day you know even though you know we're comfortable we're all in our own places or whatnot Mm -hmm. and then we come together every blue moon to um to record and everything Mm -hmm. they were um uh, uh, i I wish a a, a lot more could have happened yeah it didn't um they did hold it together and um and uh, i like to say that i have some influence in that because yeah it, 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 it influenced everybody that I was coming home. Like, yeah, wow, yeah. coming home and yo, we can be, we can be Voltron again. And so, that's what it was So like. let me ask you so, this, Stack. Let me ask you this, home. Stack. 
Um, yep. So you come home. I remember watching the video of you coming home because I think it was on a DVD. So I remember they met right. you outside and all of that, right? So, right. but right I got, but I gotta ask you, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You, you and Cray. You know what I'm saying? Y'all, y'all had yeah. the falling out, and I know this was years ago, so I know it's squash. Right. But, but man, you went so hard on Cray. What was, what was that about? Because I mean, you was hot. Well, you know, because you, was hot. you know, because honestly, you know, you know, I expect excellence, and 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 I expect a certain level of excellence, and if God bless you with excellence. And uh, God bless bless you with uh, with the ability to be able to uh, be so crafted and so gifted that 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 you you know you yourself is a leader in a sense. I I I expect more than the world from you. I expect you to lead by charge by example by being um, on a level that you know somebody like nobody has to coach you. Nobody has to tell you anything. And this is what we are in this day and age, you know, and, you know, I may come down at some point or, and or whatever the case may be, or I may have, have a, a disagreement with one of my brothers, but my right. main thing is that, look, you cannot come to me and claim to be a, a, some type of superstar. If you don't yourself recognize your ability to, to, uh, or what type of, uh, uh, responsibilities you shoulder and that you re- re- perfectly execute, um, for the sake and the benefit, and you don't use that. If you don't use that superstar power to benefit a damn yourself, but because you are the superstar, but if you don't use that superstar ability to embrace everything and have everything God put in your life around you to benefit to every aspect of it, then um, you're not really a superstar. Mm-hmm. And I'm here, and I'm I'm glad. To be here to help you recognize your own self worth if you don't see it yourself. Mm-hmm. And I, no matter what, I come down and we can argue, we can fight, we can do whatever. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to benefit you by doing everything in my power to make sure our business that we created together mm-hmm. thrives. And if I feel you slacking in that category, I'm going to get in your face or whatever the case may be. Mm-hmm. But I expect if you're a real superstar, I expect you to bring me superstar business and superstar success and superstar amenities all across the board. If you, if you don't, I'm got some props. Mm -hmm. You can't, you can't be, you can't be a a, a method man or, or, or a RZA or a a Raekwon, a ghost face. And you're not bringing to the table, a RZA, uh, a method man, ghost face, Mm -hmm. a killer uh, business to the table. And that's, and that's my issue. That was your issue with Cray uh, directly him solely bringing yeah i think with the one the one particular incident you, that you're talking about with reference to like nigga you know put up or shut the fuck up shit or get off the pot it has it was in reference uh, uh in that category but that has always been my problem yeah to a certain degree yeah you dig what i'm saying because i know and crazy that, and that and that's why when whenever we fought whenever yeah. it, whenever we were caught seen publicly right having a gripe about it was along it was it was along those lines. Yeah, because Cray was coming off of the success of uh, Riding Dirty. You know what I mean? So I know you had had referenced that. So I guess what I'm hearing is you felt as if, okay, my nigga, you've been leading the charge or you want to lead the charge. You know, you got the ball right now. You know what I'm saying? Right. Do You know, bring that shit over here to the brothers. You know, bring that whatever juice you got or you think you right. have is what I'm hearing correctly. And let's do this right. shit. You know what I mean? And, and you, what, let's do it. You felt like maybe he was being selfish. I'm talking about at that point, because let the record reflect this was years ago. So I know y'all brothers have squashed it, but I'm saying at that point, you felt like maybe he was being selfish. Well, no, not necessarily selfish. It's it's it, it, it's not so much selfish, mm-hmm. but uh, I would say that, like I said, like like for example, you build a business, right? And you build, a, or you know, no matter what it is, it can be a you know a, a real estate business mm-hmm. or a restaurant or whatever. You build a business, and all of a sudden, you just let it crumble, or you don't tend to it, and, and you don't provide, or you don't uh, do, give it. But it, you, you know, if you build a business, you have to tend to it. Mm-hmm. Simple as that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know what you 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 can neglect um, your business because they say you know what I'm saying you got to have at least two or three or four or five different ways that generate income mm-hmm. and I'd be damned if this bag if this 
just like it's neglected, mm-hmm. especially when it has business partners. Mm-hmm. Flesh and bone got his hands full in a bunch of shit. This bone thug brand situation is a whole nother kit and caboodle mm-hmm. that, that, that that constitutes a five other members, a five other individuals mm-hmm. that has to take care of. It. And if they slacking on it, then I'm going to I'm going to call it out. Right. You know what I'm saying? If you create a business, you're supposed to have multiple businesses anyway. Right. For sure. Why not tend to them and make sure they're all healthy? Real talk. I so mean, now, that's, it's not this it's. It's not to say that I no no there's no you're not being selfish when you're tending to yourself right and everything that you're trying to do as a as a as an artist you want to right. do all types of shit right right but at the same time uh, when you got this stuff over here that's alive and well and healthy or whatever mm-hmm. the case may be and it has so much more potential mm-hmm. you might as well tend to that because right. this over here what we have is bone thug right feeds pretty much virtually everything else that we're trying to do right it's, it's, right. it's because what we did is the bone brand. That I'm able to do what I'm able to do right. um, as a soloist and everything, and I attribute that, and I thank the Bone Brand for that blessing. For it, sure, you know I mean, saying? I always say I created ten businesses in case nine of them failed. You know what I mean? Exactly. And, and I and I understand. I guess what you're saying is, uh, of course, I'm on the outside looking in. It's not necessarily that Cray did anybody wrong. I mean, you can't really do somebody wrong if you maybe if right. you're doing yourself right. You know, is it that you're just doing exactly. yourself right? You know what I mean? So exactly. So now. <clears throat> So y'all squashed that, which was good. And then I know you and Busy had y'all. Uh, you and Busy had some 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 little strife as well, right? Well, you know, you know, it's it's not it's not even about that. It's just that mm-hmm. at the end of the day, I'm I am for real, for real, big bro. Yeah. To the point to where with all of my big bros, we've always had one on ones, bro. Yeah, for sure. I'm the big bro of the camp, and at some point, at one point. We've all had our brotherly instances for sure. In, 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 the straight for narrow. Sure. So yeah. um, um, there's there's a a, a whole a life span mm-hmm. of incidents where me and busy, me and lay, me and Trey, me and wish, whatever the case may mm-hmm. be. We love each other. We fight each other. We make sure each other. We make sure we all good. Right. You dig what I'm saying? Right. So yes, you're right. Yeah. Um, there, yeah, we've uh, and 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 as a successful band and a successful yeah. family, we bump heads all the time. Absolutely. Hey, listen, my mama mm-hmm. used to tell me, bro, if you don't fall out with your friends, they not your real friends. You know what I'm right. saying? <laughs> so you gonna right. you gonna bump? Hey, listen, me and P, I've been, you know, P is one of my best friends, Master P, and right. I've been with him right. since 1995. Me and P have fought. <laughs> We've actually had right. fights over basketball <laughs> and dumb shit. You know what right. I'm saying? Right. So, right. you know, I understand right. that, you know, and, you know, it's good to see that y'all were able to to keep that shit together. That shows the bond. You know oh, what yeah. I mean? Um, oh, yeah. So so now y'all get it. After all of that, you get out of prison, y'all beefing, y'all trying to struggle, you're keeping it together. Y'all fast forward to the Unify uh, album. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You finally back home. And it seemed like it was a fresh start. You know what I'm saying? Tell me about mm-hmm. the Unify album. Because I thought that that was a really great album. But it seemed mm-hmm. like it didn't get the commercial success as the ones previous. You know? Right. But I thought that was a solid right. album. Why do you think that it didn't go? You know what I'm saying? Was it more the business? Or maybe just, yeah, you know, yeah. I don't know. Maybe it didn't connect. But I, I thought it was a dope album. Well, I, well, look, it may be a little bit of both. It, mm-hmm. it, I, it was definitely... It was uh, for us creatively. It was the first time we actually got on a song or a multiple mm-hmm. a variety of songs and was doing, you know, instead of verse by verse, we like coming on word for word, word for word. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It was like it was a growth uh, creatively as a hip hop artist and a hip hop group to be a group that come in with real still sing songy fast rapping and really rap a half a bar, a couple of words a piece, and it was called the, the verse. That's hence the style unified, but we came up with, mm-hmm. and, uh, but the, you know, I, 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 I don't know. It, it probably didn't have a, uh, an, an, it's hard to say why I didn't really hit commercially, like mm-hmm. how the rest of the projects mm-hmm. did. Um, 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 uh, who knows, you know, yeah. you know, but it, it, but it's still one for the history books. It's yeah. a great album. Yeah. Meet it. Meet, meet me in the sky. What yeah. was that? that? That was the lead single. That, that motherfucker was yeah, dope. Me, that was my shit. Yeah. Yep, yeah, meet me in the sky. Yeah, and us, uh, and I would say that it took off slowly. Mm-hmm. It took off slowly because it's still kind of like snowballing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in a sense, you know what I'm saying. And so, so is all the other previous uh, uh, releases in our past or whatnot. Yeah. But the Unified album, it, it was still a very impactful mm-hmm. album. Yeah, an inspirational album. Songs like "Meet Me in the Sky" um, and all of that stuff like that. Yeah, and, so uh, it was a. Uh, 
<clears throat> so yeah, I want to I want to come up to I want to come up to kind of uh you know recent shit recent news. So what do you feel in this day and age, right? You know, uh, Busy yeah. felt some kind of way. Lay definitely felt some kind of way in terms of, you know, yeah. the generational thing in, in hip hop and rap. So you have, yeah. uh, you know, you got the older guys that, you know, some of them may feel some type of way, feel like they're not getting the respect from the younger guys. Younger guys feel like, you know, they're not getting the respect from the older guys. You know, it's it's, it's just lack of yeah. communication and it could be lack of respect. What do you think about... You know, when a lot like, you know, with the Migos, that whole thing where they said, mm-hmm. OK, we the best group in B and, and Lay yeah. was like, fuck that. What is your what right. is your take? You as in, you know, flesh, like what was mm-hmm. your take on, you know, do you feel like y'all get y'all just doing your respect with this new generation? Mm-hmm. You know, do you feel like that? Well, well, to a certain degree, um, 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 do I feel if we get our just do from the newer generation? Yes, I do. Mm-hmm. Because just because you may have one or two that might be not on that level of you know having a certain level of respect or paying homage as a, a one group but this group may not give a fuck all together but everything i don't knock them mm-hmm. and uh you know ultimately um, um when that whole thing was happening the case may be i'm like i'm on some generals mm-hmm. and, and, and i've always looked and uh looked at everything as a as a as, as a general in, in 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 a sense as a leader mm-hmm. and, and, and i didn't give two hoots of a hooters that those dudes was going around saying that they're the greatest group. And I was like, you know, more power to them. And then guess mm-hmm. what? I was like, I'm, I'm in the background and I'm looking like, you know, because I've met these dudes on several occasions. Mm-hmm. I've, I've enjoyed and I've shared stages with these dudes on several, on, on, on particular. Talk about Migos. Yeah. Migos. Yeah, uh-huh. And my whole thing, instead of, instead of dissing these dudes, I've always wanted to work with these dudes. Mm-hmm. So I was like, you know, and you know, even when I met him, I was like, whatever, yeah, we got to get in the lab, we got to work. And then that's what, that, that, those are the only words I've ever had with him. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, but uh, as far as how all of that other, you know, cats thinking they the greatest, if you don't think you're the best at what you do, something mm-hmm. is wrong with you. Yeah. I actually, you know, and, 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 and me, see, first of all, I'm a G. Mm-hmm. I'm a general. Mm-hmm. I'm a soldier. I'm, I'm more than that out here. Ain't no way in heck some youngster talking about I'm the greatest gonna get to somebody like me. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Not one inkling of an iota. Mm-hmm. And it don't even have to be no challenge. I don't have to challenge you. I'm not gonna challenge you because I'm too busy being me. Mm-hmm. I'm too, I'm too busy, I'm too busy shining. I'm too busy doing me. I ain't got time to be worried about these youngsters over here mm-hmm. saying that they're the greatest. Mm-hmm. You know, something would be wrong if they didn't feel that way. Mm-hmm. And first of all, I tip my hat off to him. It's all good. And uh, dude, dude, it's real. It's just like smashing them lyrically. That's that's that that ain't proving nothing. And let's let's make some money. Yeah. Let's 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 record a whole album. Right. If you the greatest, I'm the greatest. Okay. Let's record a whole album. Just a matter of fact. Let's 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 make sure that we do a bunch of trade offs, and then yeah. let's collaborate. Yeah. And then let your company uh, uh, merge with my company yeah. on a project since you're the greatest. Yeah. Well, let's, this is, let's, this let's, is... let's, let's, let's see, let's see how, let's, that's, that's mm. what, that's my thinking and, and, and being able to deal with that type of stuff. It yeah. never, it never bothered me though. Okay. Yeah, but I support my brothers. It, it made, it made my brothers angry for yeah. one. Yeah. And, and, and they didn't even have to smash. It was like overkill. Yeah. They didn't have to do that. Yeah. Well, this is my take on it, brother. I think that, uh, you know, hey, I've always said this, Bone Thugs and Harmony is the, you know, you guys are the temptations, you know what I'm saying, of rap, of uh, our gen- mm-hmm. generation. Y'all, y'all niggas can tour until you're 90, you know what I'm saying? Because you have such big timeless hits, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. Um, yep, yep. Um, you know, so, I mean, you know, me personally, y'all always have been my top five, you know, uh, and mm-hmm. even and you can see the influence of Bone Thugs and Harmony even in my rap career back in the day. You know, I actually worked with Lay. I did songs with Lay and B. You know what I'm saying? So I got songs with right. them from back in the day. But um, right, you know, fast forward to now. I know you got new music. You know what I'm saying? What what you got on the books now? What you uh what you got? You know? Oh yeah, just I, I just had a release drop a couple of days ago. It's called Dedication of very beautiful song it's a song that's dedicated 
mm-hmm. to all of our loved ones that's passed away, all of them, including the people that's struggling with addiction, mm-hmm. struggling with uh, 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 whatever you're dealing with in life, that having a hardship with it. A lot of folks just come out of this whole uh, this pandemic situation mm-hmm. and having a lot of hardship. The song is dedicated to them to be strong, to stay focused, Mm -hmm. and to understand that God is with you. Mm -hmm. And I'm expressing my uh, 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 understanding of, you know, sometimes you, you know, you go through a lot. Sometimes God takes beautiful songs I've ever created. And um, and, uh, it's out right now. You can go to iTunes, Apple Mm -hmm. Music, uh, Amazon and uh, and look at it. It's called Dedication. It has an angel playing a flute on there, and it's raining of the graphic. It's a very very beautiful graphic, and it's a very very beautiful song. And I'm just trying to stay busy, Corey. Yeah. I'm getting ready to follow up in another 30 days with another single. I'm gonna drop the video to this one in the next couple of days. Mm-hmm. But this is one of the things that I've been able to do throughout this whole shutdown and everything, not being able to travel as much as mm-hmm. I've been focused on recording mm-hmm. and uh, filming. I've been working on a television show. It's a tv sketch comedy show that i've been working on called fun house and i'm doing some real creative fun funny hilarious outrageous ridiculous oh yeah yeah fun. yeah i see you doing the, the spanish yeah. character you got a spanish character yeah. that i see you on oh yeah but we got we got we got all we we got all kind of characters <laughs> yeah the spanish that's that's yeah. one of them though this, yeah this 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 sketch comedy tv show is going to be real fun right. a, a fresh face for comedy uh-huh. and uh you know you know bringing 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 the humility and bringing the yeah. bringing the laugh you know, being able to, you know, poke fun at people. Yeah, yeah, again. yeah. I was surprised I'm, I'm, to see I'm you do the Spanish shit. shit. I, I was surprised to see that, you know, because, uh, you know, motherfuckers always got Stack as the, you know, the gangster, the hardhead. Right. And I was like, man, yeah. look at Stack trying to get his comedian on. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Had on the mustache yeah, and the hat and yeah. shit. I was like, look yeah, at Stack. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying, man. Have fun, man. Yeah. Hey, man, this is something's wrong with the world because son, I don't know what happened to the world, but they, 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 you're not supposed to have fun anymore. Yeah, yeah. You're not supposed to laugh anymore. You yeah. can't even see your face because I'm supposed, I'm not supposed to see you smile. I can't even yeah. see you grinning no more, but yeah. all of that, I'm, I'm ripping off the mat. I'm taking the mask off. Yeah. I'm bringing comedy back. We kicking ass like that entertainment. It's raw. It's fresh energy. It's energy that's been missing. You dig what I'm mm-hmm. saying? I'm bringing that shit 100% back mm-hmm. musically mm-hmm. and for the visuals. Like I say, it's a brand new TV show sketch comedy called Fun House, yeah. man. If we haven't, and that's what it is. We having a bunch of fun, bro. Y'all can check that out, but yeah. don't forget dedication. Mm-hmm. Um, that's out right now. It's yeah. called dedication. When you when you riding back to the house, I, mm-hmm. I want you to pull it up. Mm-hmm. I want you to pull it up on your Apple Music or your yeah. iTunes or your Spotify, whatever your choice of streaming or um, um, getting your music from for um, sure. It's out on all those platforms. So but check it out, man. I want some feedback. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna I'm check you out for sure. Uh, so we got a new Bone Thugs album coming. Is that in the works? Well, that's definitely in the works too. You know, mm-hmm. while we've uh, been busy working on our individual projects, we've been on the phone weekly, um, weekly uh, conference calls and uh, stuff of that nature uh, to uh, uh, figure out the plan of action mm-hmm. to go ahead. And move forward and what's mm-hmm. going to be the platform and stuff like that and all of that good stuff yeah but uh, uh the new the new bone thug project is definitely in the works okay dope yeah yep. we'll be looking for that bro you know i'm still a bone yep. fan you know to this day so oh, man, you better be good. man come on man come on man, come on, man. I, I didn't come on, you know man, i could that, you know i always considered you fam and a brother i work with b and lay you know what i'm saying that, so you already know um yeah yeah no that's dope yeah. bro so i'm gonna definitely support everything you got man so i mean on this platform yeah. stack i appreciate you coming i ain't gonna keep you no longer man you know on the holding court podcast man. bro i love you man i, I, I want to give you your flowers i just like to you know give people their flowers while they still breathing while you can still appreciate, appreciate them that, and smell them you know what i'm saying you your yes. brothers your group thank you i mean you were very instrumental you know what i'm saying and, and, and had a hand thank in you. my career as an artist as well just with the influence you know what i mean yeah and uh Absolutely. yeah you know i watch you guys for for years man and what y'all were able thank to you, accomplish bro. and you being able to overcome all the adverse uh, adversity you being able to you know kick addiction you know uh, come yeah. out of jail yeah. and not be, you know, have your facilities and your mind still about you <laughs> and being able to be a productive citizen. I know you, you know, you got a family, yeah. you raising kids and doing all that, doing good. So yeah. I just want to yeah. give you your flowers, my brother, and tell you that, you know, 
I appreciate you, you. you know, the hip hop community appreciates you. You know what I'm saying? Keep being great. Keep doing what you're doing. You know what I mean? Thank you, brother. Yeah. I appreciate that 100%, bro. You're going to, I really appreciate that, man. Yeah. I need those spirals. That's what I'm saying. I said, I mentioned that in this dedication song too. You're going to really trip when you hear that song after yeah. you, which after you just said what you just said yeah. and you listen to this song, you're going to see it all come in cohesive. Yeah. Like yeah. This. Cause man, I'm going to be honest with you. I created this platform, bro. Because I want to normalize mm-hmm. celebrating people while they're here. See, too many times okay. we, you know, we wait till people die. You see with DMX, you see, then all of a sudden they're, they're the yeah. greatest. Right. All of a sudden everybody want to be the first to post a picture and post, oh man, right. you know, everybody running to that. I want to normalize, yeah. you know, telling people how great they are. You know what I'm saying? And, exactly. and highlighting exactly. what they've accomplished, you know, and, and you know, your testament to overcoming you know what i mean so yeah, you know absolutely. i just i want to share your story you know what i mean so somebody else yeah. that that's younger could be going through it because i always say man you're never too old to become you know who you want to become you know what i'm saying so you know you keep being you're never, you you're, you're never, never too that. old never that you know what i mean so uh man i just okay. want to salute you two hand salute you know much love i appreciate you tapping in with me stacking you know we're going to do how we do. So, and you know what I'm saying? I appreciate that. Yeah. But that's what's up. So, look, man, I, I need y'all when y'all get to a, 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 a time yeah. time to get to it, the treatment for North, North Coast. Coast. Yeah. And then we're going to pull the crew in. We're going to pull the sites yeah. in and yeah. go scouting some sites. Man. Yeah. But uh, you said it. You called the scout. I mean, you, you called it. You called it. You called it, bro, bro. PCH. So this, uh, the, yeah. The uh, the uh, the script for the North Coast. Uh, yeah. Let's get that together, okay? Court? Yeah, for sure. I'm for on sure. It. I'm on it. Yeah. <laughs> let's go. Let's go, Ken. I, I appreciate, appreciate it. you, That's man. What's up? So keep me posted. All right. All right, for sure.